two, one. Young Bill Burr, Paper Tiger, coming out tonight on Netflix. <laughs> Ooh, exciting. Are you pumped? Uh, yes, I am. I'm very excited, uh, I think, more just to see, you know, just to people see how good it looks. It was Mike Binder directed it. And, uh, you know, I, I just, I don't know, I just had this idea for how a special I wanted it to look. And none of it really had to do with other, like, necessarily uh, comedy specials, more like rock concerts that I saw. And not saying it's all, like, super jumpy and stuff, but just sort of like, uh, I don't know. It's weird how the way they shot shit back in the day where they held shots longer, so it sucked you in, so you kind of felt... Not necessarily that you were there, but the presence of being there. And I really have this belief that if you fucking go edit really quick, 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 it's like flipping through the channels and each time like your brain resets. Yeah. And like when you go to a show, you're just sitting there looking at the band or looking at the comedian like that. It's not like I'm here now I'm in the balcony. Now I'm behind you. Now I'm up here and all that. So we try to make sure like the pacing of it. I explained it to him and he was just like, I get it. I well, he's a it. comic. So yeah. that certainly helps. Yeah. So the way he did it... Uh, I hope that people see that as opposed to the shit that they normally do. Like, mm -hmm, well, how can I get offended? <laughs> <laughs> well, they're definitely going to get offended. It's, uh, it's a sport now to get offended by comedy. It seems like people get excited to be offended. I know. A lot of the questions I've gotten out from people, non-comedians, that have been about, you know, well, with, in the light of Dave's special, it's just like, weren't you guys all mad at Sebastian like a week ago? <laughs> now it's Dave. Were they mad at him for uh, the, M the VH1 thing? No, they weren't. One person got mad and wrote something, and then everybody, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. I, I didn't realize I didn't like that. <laughs> what, I don't like that. What was it? I didn't, I didn't hear a peep out of that. Did you hear? What, what, what uh, they I said? don't want to start it back up for him. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm trying to get him, get him all going again. It was just like. Uh, I don't know why he did that anyway. I was like, those things are never fun. You're, you're, you're basically, you know, you're, you're the host of what's a commercial for a bunch of bands. It's just, he's a great comic. He sells out Madison Square Garden. Like he Four doesn't times. Need and he did a great that. job too. Yeah. He did a great job. Somebody was talking about- Four times in two nights. Yeah. Which is crazy. He turned over Madison Square Garden like a comedy club. Yeah. <laughs> like he was doing an improv. <laughs> Like he's doing the fucking. I got two shows improv. Fridays, two shows Saturday. <laughs> Come down <laughs> to see me. Square Garden. It's at uh, oh yeah, Madison Square yeah, Garden in, in the, the round. round. There was no other way. Eighteen thousand people. Yeah, eighteen times. Well, I was say he could have done Giant Stadium. He could have. He really could have. But it's like, it's like why? Beer. Why bother? Why bother doing a VH1 Music Awards? It's just it's not a good venue for comedy. It's not a good like people see him. It's because, not you know why because well, Eddie yeah. did it, Chris did it. Um, I'm gonna talk too much to keep this fucking thing going, and it's like a le that's a legendary old school stand up gig. You, you know, you did H1 Music Awards. No, it was MTV. Was it MTV Music Awards? Oh, they're all the same to me. Does VH1 have their own Music Awards? They don't. Look at me. I'm fucking might have had one so point, old. I don't even know what I'm talking about. Do they making what, CDs? They're selling CDs after the show? I know. I still remember that MTV was cooler than VH1. Does your VH1. Jaguar have a CD player? Um, no. Then Why? Make, I, my car doesn't have one either. Oh, all right. My Tesla doesn't have a fucking... He's trying to do the math. Is he subtly insulting me? No. You got a cassette <laughs> tape in there? <laughs> I'm just saying they don't, <laughs> they don't have them anymore. <laughs> I've I got a VCR in the trunk. Somewhere along the line, they just stopped making them. Well, that's the thing, you know. And I was in New York all summer, and, and all those, all those, the up and coming rappers are like trying to hand you a CD. It's like, I, I, what am I going to do with that? They still have CDs. Well, then they do something. Then they, oh, uh, just click on this or scan this, and it goes to like a, a, a Vimeo page. And then I'm like, is this guy in my phone now? Like, what just happened? Does he have Ooh. my contacts? Yeah. So I just kind of steer clear to them. I get weirded out by those little Q scan things. Is that what they call them? Was it Q, Q, what was it? QR code. QR code. I get weirded out by those things because your camera goes on it and then boom, it opens up a website. I'm like, what is happening here? I'll tell you what's a weird one is they have home security systems now where I was reading an ad for this on my podcast and I was thinking like afterwards, like, like a lot of times home, I guess, um, I don't know, alarm goes off because your window blows open and then everybody fucking shows up and it's like, oh, sorry, the window blew open. This actually has video cameras so they can confirm that somebody is in your house. But then I'm thinking like, well, what's to stop them from just turn that on and start watching your life like a show? Nothing. Like, hey, they're fighting again. 
Well, for sure, if there's a stream, it's possible for someone to do that. For sure. If there's a stream, no, 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 no in the contract, it. it says we would never do that. Oh, oh okay. Oh, as long as <laughs> It's not like some people don't. Look at this. Doorbell camera from Ring has partnered with 400 police forces extending surveillance concerns. Yeah. 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 I mean, as long as they're just using it to catch the bad guys, which is going to be what they're saying. But there's, there's going to be somebody. Somebody has their dick in their hand right now looking at that. Do- <laughs> looking through that doorbell. It's an And then the way people get uh, obsessed like and then, oh, then you're jerking yeah. off just to the woman walking up to the door to go into her house, and it's not enough. Man, I gotta see what's up. I gotta see what's behind the door. <laughs> Calls up. Hey, would you be interested in uh, furthering your security? No, I think the doorbell is enough. Interesting, you say that. We just had a case the other day where, unfortunately, she thought it was enough, and it wasn't really. And then sells him that. Now he's watching her eating cornflakes. It's a slow creep into your life. How much time before it's everywhere, before everyone can see everyone everywhere? Yeah, I don't know. But what's weird is younger people have a much different idea of privacy. Yeah. Because their shit has kind of been out there. I would not want to be young right now. They have a real tough time where, dude, when I was younger, when I got my ass kicked, it was over. It wasn't video documentation for the rest of my life. This is the kid from Rocky Point. He's all grown up now. And you're trying to get laid in a bar like, 20 years later, you're like, yes, that happened. I was I was eight. Sorry. I was just thinking of that. I watched this kid try to throw a triangle up in a street fight, and the guy slammed him on his head and punched him unconscious and kept punching him while he was out. Oof. And then the kid just climbed off of him and walked towards his friends, and everybody's like, oh, and this guy's lying on the ground, pawing up his arms, like probably experiencing severe brain damage. And I'm thinking, what if that was my son? You know, what if that's your son? You watch some some guy slam him on his head, and then as he's unconscious, punch him five, six, seven times in the face. Yeah, that's fucked. It's fucked. That's why I stopped fighting. That's why. Yeah. You don't want to hurt anybody. No, <laughs> no, I didn't want to be that guy. <laughs> I I was like baby fat tough until like fucking sixth grade, and then I sort of leaned out, and then I was like, I better get funny, and then that's when people started to learn how to fight, and there was blood and shit. Ooh. And I remember there was this dude, I think I talked told this story before, I got off, the kid got off the bus, he was fucking jacked, the other kid was kind of baby Huey, big guy, but the other kid got off the bus first, and he just jumped him, and then just sat on his chest, and it was it was like, oh! <laughs> One of those fucking fights. Ugh. And the kid didn't come to school for a week. Oof. He came back, to, by the time he came back to school, most of the swelling had come down, but he, I, he almost looked like a, he was a cousin. It wasn't him. Oof. Yeah, and I was just like, yeah, I'm not, I don't, I don't want that to happen to me. So that's one of the darkest things that I ever heard anybody say about a fight. Khabib Nurmagomedov said about Conor McGregor. He goes, I want to change his face. Yeah, see, Oof. there's people out there like that that are like, yeah, there's this that okay, I should stop now is missing, and yeah. you don't want to be underneath the, all of that. They just kept getting oh, yeah. worse the older I got. That sound of somebody's head hitting the floor. The worst is um, (laughs) world star hip hop videos where um, the worst one I ever saw was this guy was drunk and he was talking shit and one guy knocked him out. And then when he's out cold lying down, everybody took shots at him. I mean, everybody in the street, people were kicking him in the head and were running up to him and kicking him like a soccer ball, Uh. punched him in the face. I mean, like 10, 15 people doing it, just running up to him, boom, kicking him, running up, punching him. Oh, yeah. it's horrific. How did we get on this? Hmm. I don't know. I got a great special coming out. <laughs> yeah, your comedy special has nothing to do with brain damage or random acts of violence. Why'd you decide to do it in England? Um, Because I'm a Zeppelin fan. And it was, really? it was about doing it at that. It, I, I, didn't th- I just wanted to perform at that venue. Royal Albert Hall? Yeah. So then I performed there and... Uh, I had a great time, although I was in my head for a long time, like during the show. I was like, I'm standing where Robert Plant was standing, and John Bonham's drums were fucking right there. And I, I really had a hard time because- While you were doing stand-up? Yeah. How many shows did you do? I just did, I just did the one. It was in June of uh, last year. Wow, you only filmed one show. No, 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 no. That, that's the first time I did it. Oh, so oh, then, oh. Um, you know, some of my reps came over, and I was just like, wow, this place is amazing. I mean, it was, it was incredible. And uh, we just started talking, just going, you think maybe you could shoot a special here? I was like, yeah, I don't know. And I was like, ah, 
is my shit going to work over here? It would be different. You know, each special, I try to make it be a little different, a different vibe, you know, southern crowd, northern crowd, west coast, east coast, or whatever. So we just kept talking about it, and then I talked to Binder about it, and it all just became about me and him smoking a cigar in London. I was like, all right, fuck it, let's do it. And then the whole way up, I was questioning Going, did I fuck up? Was this fucking stupid? I should have just shot it in the States. And then I'd be like, no, 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 it was a good idea. It's a good idea. Wait a minute. But <laughs> what, what, if, what if I don't fucking and just, you know, which probably ended up being a good thing for it. But, um, I, you know, I did a run of dates leading up to it before I, I shot over there. And I, I kind of knew what was going to work and I knew what was, wasn't going to work. And then, you know, people who are showing up, they're listening to your podcast. So they get like the references and stuff because I was talking to somebody going, oh, I was surprised, you know, they got a lot of those references. It's like, well, that's a specific crowd coming to see me. If I did all of those jokes in front of just a random London crowd, I think of people, you know, right. the fuck's this guy talking about? Where'd you do gigs before you did London? When you did a run of gigs? Did you do them in England or did you do them? Yeah, I did uh, Liverpool, Manchester, uh, Glasgow. I can't remember. And then I did one other one. Began with a B, I forget. <laughs> you know, it was just literally bam, bam, bam. And I got sick <clears throat> when I was in uh, Liverpool. I don't know what happened. They ate something before I got there or whatever. And uh, I had like this stomach virus. I had it the night too when I was shooting it. I was like getting over it. And uh, so that was, I was just like, there's always, and I was thinking, is there always something? Or am I just that age that there always is something, but I just don't notice until the night there's cameras here. You know what I mean? When everything's heightened. Yeah. I'm like, ah, oh, I fucking threw my back out. Never fucking fails. Special. But blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and it's just like, well, I throw my back out a couple times a year. <laughs> Except I'm just not shooting that night, so I don't give a shit. And I just joke about it. So why don't I just do that when I go to do it? So, um, How many shows did you film? Uh, we did two. Uh, and it wasn't the same night either. So it was kind of weird. Rather than like bam, bam, so you're warmed up. I kind of right. had to get going both times. So, and like most times, it was the set that I liked better. Uh, it was probably, I think, the second night. So, most of it's from the second night. And then there's just a couple just because it went a little too long. And I just, I just wanted to get in, kick the shit out of them, and get out, leave them wanting more, mm. the old school thing. So, there was just a couple, I think we just took uh, just a couple things just to kind of splice one section out of there and splice the things and then get it going. So, how many seats? I don't. I don't remember. Is it I don't a big remember. place. I don't remember, but I do know the night of the special. Like I, I did this thing. I was making fun of that whole support the troops thing and everything. And what had happened was it wasn't working, and it was killing the whole tour. I'm like, you got to be fucking kidding me! Finally, go to record this shit and blah 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 blah. And it turned out that some terrorist group had made a bunch of fucking threats or something that day. Oh, yeah, and nobody told me. Oh. You know, well, don't tell him. I don't get in his fucking head. So now I'm up there going like, why isn't this working? Am I suddenly not funny? <laughs> not oh. like it didn't work, but it, there was just this thing hanging in the fucking air. Had I known that, I would have addressed it and then it would have been fine. So we just we just spliced that little, you know, six, seven minutes out of there. Um, I don't know That's a great think. bit, though. I love that. Bit. It is, but I'm, I'm I recorded at Madison Square Garden for just like a double vinyl. I'm gonna do. Oh really? Yeah, yeah. I'm into all those old school rock things. Ah. Like I'll lose my ass. I'm gonna lose my shirt on it. But did, it, it has that bit on it. Didn't you do that before, like at Radio City or somewhere? You did another album in mm -hmm. the past. Was it Radio City? I did one at, at uh, Carnegie Hall. Carnegie Hall. And then the last time I did Madison Square Garden, I, I didn't explain it to them correctly that I was trying to record to do an album there, and. Um, they just took the audio from the board. So I'm just like super loud and it sounds like I'm in front of eight people. And I was just like, <laughs> <laughs> was like, all right, lesson learned. All right. That's hilarious. Yeah. So I like doing that like nerd out comedy shit. Like I love all that stuff. Like I just saw Tarantino for the second time I saw his Once Upon a Time in America and I went down to his theater that he bought, that Beverly Cinema, and they had all this cool merch from the movie like you know buttons and posters and t-shirts and shit um i didn't buy anything because i'm trying not to have because then i get sentimental and i can't fucking throw it out it's just like hoarding yeah yeah does your wife get mad at you for shit like that what hoarding did, did she did she go why did you bring this home did you, no, did you i'm get the one who shit? says that oh i'm the one who goes like okay now what are we throwing out not throwing out because then it ends up in the fucking ocean where are you gonna bring <laughs> that where someone can actually 
use it. Yeah, so now like whenever I do um whenever whenever I do like comedy festivals or anything and they have that whole merch bag, I just say I don't want it. Yeah, good for you. Yeah. Yeah, I've But uh, we got a phone charger if I get Yeah, that's not going to work in a couple years cuz I'll have a new phone and then I just have that thing. Do people send you a lot of shit? Like no. because of the podcast, you don't get t-shirts or stuff like that? Occasionally, but I kind of put it out there like I I just need you to listen. That's enough. I don't need you to because then what's something what happens what sucks is when people really take time to make something. Right. And now it's like I can't leave this behind. And it's always big and awkward. I'm like, how the fuck am I gonna get that in my bag? <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. And then you show up at the airport with some big stupid thing with your face on it, like, what the fuck is with this guy? <laughs> <laughs> That's always weird when someone wears their own shirt. When a comic oh, or a yeah. musician or something. I got I had a guy who I really like, Zuby. He was here the other day, a rapper from England. He had his own shirt and his own hat on. If he wasn't such a great guy, I would have given him a hard time. I just well, you have quite a few listeners, so he's getting a free free advertisement out of it. I would imagine. I don't know. Well, he was getting advertisement out of the whole podcast. I would imagine. Right. Like you don't have to. No. I guess maybe everybody's got their own fucking yeah. way of doing mm-hmm. shit. So. Um, I don't know, but I've been having fun. I got to tell you, I was so envious of you earlier this year because you'd put out your killer special and just watching you getting to do my favorite thing, you know, dump the shit I'm sick of and try like the new stuff. So that's where I am um, in my act. And I, you know, I follow you on all the stuff. And I was, I think around May or something, June, you said, all right, it's ready to go. And um, I was doing an acting gig and I couldn't get the sets that I wanted. I was like, fuck, man, that's what I want. I want, I got to get. I got to get going on this shit because um, people watching, I got to fucking follow you sometimes down the store, which is never fun. <laughs> well, we're doing gigs together this Thursday. We're doing the mm-hmm. improv and the store. I'm very excited about that. Yeah. I've been doing a lot of these gigs. My lightsaber goes up about this far right now where my act is. If I go to turn it on, it's like... <laughs> <laughs> How old is your act now? Like the act you're working with? Um, I have... Look, I can I can go down. I can I can murder with 20 and then the rest of it. It gets a little... Uh, we get a little lost at sea. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sort of drifting on a piece of plywood, you know? That's a, a fun time, while. though, isn't it? Yeah. It, it is. It, if people haven't paid to come see you. Um, so what I will do is I'll stay adrift a little bit and then I'll just do shit from my special... But now, as of uh, you know, today at midnight, I feel I won't be able to do it. So, so now that's gone. So, then, will you still be able to do the troops bit because it's not in there? Um, I won't do it because I did it already, and it's coming out on something. And I also feel like most of the places I'm going to go to, I already did it in that city. Right. And I have this paranoia. Oh yeah. That the exact same people show up. And have that, you ever had fans come and sit in the front row two nights in a row, and you see them? I've had people back to back shows an eight and then a ten thirty and then they're sitting there. It's just like <laughs> And they're just sitting there. The rabbit's already in the hat. <laughs> rabbit's already in the hat. <laughs> <laughs> it's a body double. They, they they know everywhere where it's going. <laughs> yeah. That's a Teddy Bergeron bit. He's wearing a wire. He's wearing a wire. That's Santa right. Claus isn't real. He's wearing a That's wire. Right. How good was that guy? Oh, People don't amazing. know. He was he one was of the amazing. greatest of all time. He really was. I saw him when I was an open micer and I almost quit. He he won up on an open mic night. Oh yeah. And um um Bill McDonald was the host. Is that his name? Yeah. That's funny. Those early on guys can make you want to quit. Oh my god. Yeah, he, he was so good. He was so polished. And I felt like such a slob. No, the thing about him too was it was effortless, and he made it look effortless. It was just effortless. He just went, uh, John Panette was a guy I saw. Well, I was just like, it didn't make me want to quit, but I was just like, I was just like, what the fuck was that? Yeah. He went up on a, um, a Tuesday at Nick's. Yes. And it was like fucking, you know, there was like maybe 30 people. This place held 400 people. It was just like a lull. It was like when I started was the 80s hangover, and just stand-up was dead. And there was like 30 people and there was a bunch of, you know, bitter comics going, this place used to be packed. They'd be lying around the block. You should quit. All these fucking guys saying that. <laughs> <laughs> so fucking Panette just dropped by, rest his soul. He just dropped by and he went up and did 12 minutes and got a sta- a legit. It wasn't, oh, you're John Panette. Thank you for stopping by. No. You're famous. It was he fucking murdered. I think that was the first time he was kind of, it was that era when he was doing that you go now buffet bit. Yes. 
where it just keeps – every time you think it got to the height of how funny it could be, it went to another level and then another and another. The only time I ever saw a guy – maybe a guy like Regan or something where they just have that – they just repeat that thing. Uh, I, I was doing a tour with Norton Natell and Jim Brewer, and Jim <sighs> Brewer had a bit. Never cursed. About his dad shit in his pants? His dad shit in his <laughs> pants. And the thing he kept going back to, other than you go uh, now, was the, uh, when he was doing the, <laughs> like he was going to puke. Dude, I, I remember the first time I saw him do that, I was in Atlantic City, and I was standing, there was a wall behind me, and I slow, I was laughing so hard, I, I started sliding down the wall. <laughs> I was holding my stomach, going, F- what is that? Bro is an animal. He's the mo- one of the most underrated comedians of all time. The worst I ever ate it coming up, ever. Following Jim Brewer uh, in like 91. At 91. the Boston? No, no, no. We were at um, a comedy loft, I think in Nanuet, New York. And uh, I should not have been headlining. I've been doing comedy. <laughs> I've been doing I was comedy. I just talking to Bobby Kelly about those gigs. <laughs> those gigs where you shouldn't have been headlining, no but you way. were. I've been doing comedy maybe three years, four years, maybe. Maybe four. I just wasn't ready. No way. But my manager was good, and he got me a gig as a headliner. It was just decent money. Oh, and Brewer was middling? Mm-hmm. We were fine. I was fine until late show Saturday night. When I tell you he went up like just like a man possessed. And he used to have this bit about coming home drunk, and uh, his mother was a demon. You know, like, oh, God. <laughs> do you remember the bit? No, but I know his talent, so he's already oh. doing him drunk and then that demon voice oh, that he's going to do. It's over. His facial expressions, and, and he just caught it. He just caught it, where it was like, I'd, I mean, he had murdered all week. <laughs> He'd murdered all week, but I'd gotten by. Like, I did not have as good a set as him all week, but I got by. It was good, good enough, no, not embarrassing. Saturday night, late show. Let me on fire. Championship round. Let me on fire. Well, I walked off stage <laughs> early. I was supposed to do 45 minutes. I think I did 35. It was death. 35 of oh. death. Nervous. Feeling like an asshole. Sweating. Oh, Mouth drying God. up. Terrible, terrible, terrible. Leg shaking. Me, took me forever to recover. Took me weeks. Weeks. Uh, <laughs> I had one one time. I just did Vegas. Whenever I go there, I always go by the uh, the Trop, right? That's yeah. what it is? Yeah, Trop Yeah. I got. I was contracted to be the headliner, and I got bumped down to the middle act. Oof. I got demoted. Who was the middle? I don't remember, but he was great. And it was Frank Del Pizzo was the uh, was the host, and he was like a seasoned headliner. The other guy was a seasoned headliner, and I just said, I don't know what the, I was. Some young guy they were giving a fucking shot to. So I went out there. This is like the late '90s, and I had the, my shiny black button down I'm playing Vegas shirt you know <laughs> and uh, I remember my manager at the time gave me shit about the shirt going you're gonna wear that I go yeah it's fucking Vegas you can wear whatever you want so I walked into the club and it was just where the trop was then it was like an older crowd because they hadn't redone it or whatever so it was just like their dying off crowd Oof. so dude I went up there and I, I did sort of okay I just did okay, but they both had better sets to me. And then that was the Tuesday or the or the Wednesday. And then the Wednesday I came up, and by then I started to have another not good set. And then I got in my head, like, <clears throat> like I'm not going to be able to make these people laugh. And I remember just seeing, like, there was just this lady back towards the kitchen and, like, her old lady, you know, that hair that looks like it's flammable. From, <laughs> it was just backlit. <laughs> and that's all I could see, dude. And I just went in and out of, like, like bombing and uh so then what was it thursday morning comes i'm flying my girlfriend out at the time so she could see my big headlining set in vegas my name's out on the sign right and uh i remember she called i don't remember her name but she called me up she's just like uh bill it's so-and-so from the uh the trap how you doing i'm like uh good good she goes yeah uh so uh, how do you think it's going <laughs> that's what she said i was like you know, oh. I think it's going pretty good. The crowd was a little old last night. Blah, blah, blah. And she just goes, yeah, you know, I, I don't I don't think it's happening. And, you know, I, I think it'd be better if you just middle. We're still going to pay the same money. She was real. That was the worst part. She was really nice about it. And uh, then I had to go down there that night. My girlfriend was coming in the next night. I had to go down there. And, uh, you know, I just remember coming in and Frank was looking at me. And I he was sort of looking at me like, how is he going to handle this? And I just was just, I guess I suck or whatever. And they just really, and then they were, they were both, they were never mean to me. 
they were never mean to me. They were both really, really cool guys, and we had like a great weekend. But then my girlfriend came down and it was just like I had to explain to her why there was another person going on after Oof. me. Did yeah. it go better with you as a middle? Or were you sure? Yeah, you know, you know what it was? Uh, yeah, it went better. And then by the end of the weekend, I figured it out. But I was never funnier than the headliner or Frank. I just wasn't. I just, I wasn't seasoned. I didn't know how to do it. And it was my first weekend in Vegas. And um, is that true? I think it was. It was my first weekend in Vegas. Because then in the next few years, I, I would middle at uh, the improv at Harris. So uh, that was the thing. You know, it was funny. It was, I was really depressed about it and my girlfriend didn't care she goes no we're still here we go out go have a good time or whatever and then i was almost getting like upset with her that she didn't understand <laughs> where instead of being like oh wow you're really cool <clears throat> that the reason you came out here was because you just wanted to hang with me i was too young and angry and self-involved oh, oh yeah it's hard when your girl sees you bomb too well, unfortunately she didn't see that <clears throat> she just saw me uh middle middle that's not bad <laughs> It could have been worse. Yeah, she could have been there while the whole thing went down, I guess. I don't know. One of the worst bombings in my life. Um, I was working with J.B. Smooth, who's fucking phenomenal. Uh -huh. And uh, I was uh, supposed to be the headliner, uh -huh. but it was a weird college gig in the middle of nowhere in Jersey. Right. And it was hard to get to, and there was no GPS back then, so you had to follow directions, right? Remember those? They'd Your give you rant. a piece of paper. Yeah. They'd call you up. Okay, you're going to take a right at here and a left yep. there, and then you take the one on one. So uh, I, I used get to do there. a bit about the person doing the bad directions where they would go, okay, and then you're going to see a farmhouse on the right. It has a red door, and there's cows out front. You'd be like, all right, am I going to take a right there? No, you're going to keep going. And they just kept bringing up shit that you were going to see. It's just like, finally, you're just like, just tell me the fucking thing that I'm going to see when I turn. Is it Grassy Hill? And there's, there's, a, there's a scarecrow on I try, try. No, you're going to keep going. It's just like, all right, sorry. Good no time. worries. No worries. So I miraculously got there on time, but JB did not. And so they go, well, we're going to wait for JB because he's not here yet. So I go, okay. They go, well, we have a lounge. You can go sit there and watch TV. So I watch TV, and it's a special, um, a new special on the Malibu fires. So this is probably like, whatever, 93 or something like that. Mm -hmm. Some gigantic fires. No, it was before 93. It was like 91, 92. And uh, there was a fireman. The fireman was weeping because he had saved his house, but his neighbor lost his house, and he had saved up all his money to help build this house. This, this guy, you know, it was like his life's work to build his house. But he was devastated because he was a fireman, and his neighbors lost their house. This guy's weeping. He's weeping about his house. And then they had this fucking kid calling out for his dog. They couldn't find the dog. They lost the dog. And they were hoping the dog got away to safety. Jesus so this God. kid's walking around, Rusty, Rusty, <laughs> just walking down the street, oh, Rusty, no. Rusty. Then lady opens up the door. JB's not here, so we're going to have you go on first. I'm like, oh, no. So I went on stage thinking of that kid calling for the dog and the fireman crying. And I just ate shit. Shit. I mean, I just went. I had nothing. I, there was nothing. <laughs> it was. Did nothing. you have to do an hour? No, I, I wound up doing. I wound up doing. I think I was supposed to do forty-five minutes. I wound up doing the forty-five minutes, and I mean, I ate shit. I did not. I did not get any laughs. I don't remember. I mean, I was depressed. I remember thinking I could never do this again. I did it one other time too, though. I could never do this again. It was fucking terrible. To make matters worse, JB eventually got there. Halfway into my set, he goes on after me and fucking murders. I mean murdered. Nuked the room. Flattened it. These kids were so tired of me. They were so, and I was like, look, I fucked up. I, I watched this. And they were so excited to see me because, you know, they have those college conference things where you right. go like NAFTA or whatever it is. And you go, is that what it's called? What are those things called? NACA? That was those? No, you just made me forget it. Uh, Being with an A. Yeah. So the something college campuses, whatever the fuck it is. There, I never it, forgot that in my life. Till you just said NAFTA. It was <laughs> AFTRA. It's over. Aca? Now I'll never remember it. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's screaming it. There's a comic out there screaming it into their their NACA. NACA. That's right. So um, I did NACA and murdered. I mean murdered. They told me, look, you can do it. Strong clean. interest forms. I remember that. Oh, strong interest. Strong yeah. interest forms. After um, those sh sets. They they said, look. <clears throat> I remember having a conversation with my agent. She said, look, 
I know you're you're not clean, but if you're clean, you can get a lot of gigs. You can get a lot of gigs. Yeah, that was the big And big I made switch. this just to, and people were eating shit. They were eating shit at the conference because all these comics were like nervous. And I said, you know, I'm doing my club set. I don't give a fuck. I'm not a, I'm not a clean comic. I can't do this. I've already done this before. I tried. And I went up and I did all sex material and fucking murdered. So these kids were so excited to see me. And I got there and just ate shit. Oh no! They so, and they they were going. They were you pumped. Wait, wait till this guy oh, comes. Yeah. Oh wow! He's the man. He's gonna be huge someday. Oh my god! I ate shit so hard. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just picturing you doing all your sex material, <clears throat> depressed, <laughs> bombing, just going bombing. You ever not just bombing, but you ever like bang a girl doggy style? Nah. I think when you're old, but it's this is how you do it, not this scoliosis thing. <laughs> <laughs> Because I remember having to follow yeah, that bit. bit. I uh, remember that bit, and that bit would fucking murder. Not that night. <laughs> I remember that, and then every chick in the room wanted to fuck you, and then I would go on stage with my orange afro. Hey, I have <laughs> things to say. <laughs> Anybody? Hi. Yeah. Mm, yeah, that, I ate shit. And uh, one other time I ate shit real bad, I was headlining as well. Um, this, uh, this, this one is not nearly as bad as the other two eat shits. The Jim Brewer one was devastating, but in all fairness, it was good for me because it changed my act. It made me realize like, you got to respect people's fucking attention span. You can't go up there thinking about yourself and right. trying to, you got to re respect these people paid money, work hard. Yep. Like you got to be ready and you can't fucking take headliner gigs when you're not ready to headline. Yeah. I remember I did the same place a year and a half later and fucking murdered. And I was so happy. I was so the guy said, "Wow, you fucking got better." I'm like, "Thank you, thank you." This thing almost went out. Thank mm. God. The other time where I ate shit, I act, I I read a conspiracy theory book about JFK that I've yeah. I fucking love this. It's called Best Evidence by David Lifton. This buddy of mine who's in a band. Behold a pale horse. That's great oh, that's reading before you go up. <laughs> <laughs> we kind of came here to forget our problems. <laughs> Well, I, I I read this and I was like, oh my god, they shot JFK. This is the fucking the government. He said the casket was empty. The fucking they, they they changed the autopsy. I had all this shit in my head, and I was you know twenty five, so I was written by some guy who wasn't there. Well, it was written by a very credible guy who was actually paid. He was an accountant, and he was uh, they they hired he him. He was so inside they let him look in the casket. They no. said, listen, I'm just going to show this to you. There's nobody in here. They <laughs> we did it. They Keep hired him shut. to go over the Warren Commission report, but they never oh. expected anybody to read the entire report because the report was like fucking 900 volumes or some shit, just an incredible amount of pages. But this guy went over it with a fine-tooth comb, and he's like, this whole thing was horseshit. Like, the whole Warren Commission report was horseshit. They concocted all these different things. So I, I went on stage with this this thing in my head like oh my god there's evil people running the government and they killed kennedy and, uh, and i'm the guy who's <clears throat> gonna save everybody so i ate shit on thursday night and uh and then i you know they were very they were a little uneasy with me because they knew i was like i was i already was doing well at clubs like i was a a comic they were looking forward to seeing right and then the next night i apologized i said listen i fucked up yesterday i read this conspiracy theory book it'll never happen again and i went up and killed the next night but i knew i knew i'd <laughs> fucked up i knew it was a mistake it was just oh they you just read the declaration of independence <laughs> the next night before you went up <laughs> i was just listening to acdc only <laughs> <laughs> you know it's funny i listened to them on the way over here they don't oh, never get man, over because i i got the new tool album and it's fucking unbelievable and uh but i always end up just i can't get out of that fucking orbit i just ended up going back well yeah. it's such good shit man it's such good when i when i need uh, a really pick me up i listen to a whole lot of rosie oh yeah. yeah that'll get you going how fucking good is dean del rey's voice how fucking good is no. his voice yeah, when he like, was singing that oh yeah Fuck that! You should have heard it. You should have heard it. I put, in, I put in it the, on my Instagram, in the forum. dude. His voice is fucking phenomenal. Yeah, that, wasn't it a whole lot of Rosie that he was singing? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he sang a whole <clears throat> bunch of shit. He sang a whole. His bunch fucking of shit. voice is incredible. Isn't he going through some God weird back shit right now? Does he have some bulging disc issues? Yeah, I think it's it's left over He's from the uh, torch man. Fuck these matches from the. Uh, that's so easily bike influence. accident. You should have just do heroin. Fuck these cigars. Oh, okay, Joe. The um, from his motorcycle accident. Whoa, that's a serious flame you got going there, buddy. Ooh, that's um, a sound too. 
Yeah, something like that. I, it's kind of his story, so I'm not really sure. I, I know, uh, I was joking with him. I go, you realize, yeah, some bulging dicks thing left from his motorcycle accident. I said, you realize half of that is the motorcycle. And the other half is you being a front man of a fucking rock band banging your head for fucking two and a half decades. He laughed. He's like, yeah. I worked with him uh, this weekend out in Vegas. He fucking killed, but I noticed him trying to sit up and kind of be a little straight, but he's, mm. he's definitely getting through it. And uh, we hung out the next day and we saw Elton John because he's on the uh, farewell toe. It was fucking unreal. Was it good? Three hours, no opener, starts with a hit, plays not. It was like closing bits for three hours. Oh, wow. And then watching how he moves, he stays pretty much at the piano. But watching how he moves, it's just, and then they show like the old highlights where he was like in these fucking platform shoes, just slamming the piano, pushing himself up like you know, almost bending over backwards, coming down. He'd do like three, four times in a fucking row. Look at him there. Yeah. Oh, there you go. <coughs> yeah. And like when he walked, like you just, re I just respected the shit out of him when I saw him walking, looking like an NFL running back, Oof. going, "This fucking guy." No, he he. He realized people paid money. Oh, you mean looking like a current NFL running back? No, no, no. I mean like walking back. like like when you see those guys. Uh, not the guy who's getting elected into the Hall of Fame. The guys who've been in the Hall of Fame for ten years. <laughs> when they come walking up to hug the other guy and all this shit kind of settled oh. in. Yeah, but like, um, look, his piano rotates and everything. Smoke, fire. Oh yeah, look at the background. They were just Ooh. jamming on that thing like. Wow. I actually missed that part. I was at the uh, Steak and Shake or something. Speaking of uh, <laughs> tool and rock-related injuries, you know, Maynard, when he's on stage, he stomps his foot on the ground. He, like, stomps. Like, you know, he's always, like, stomped when he sings. Well, he's a jujitsu guy, and uh, he was having a hard time, like, working on certain moves. He's like, my fucking hip. It's like something wrong with my hip. <clears throat> he wound up having to get a hip replacement from stomping on the ground. He All stomped his hip out. Do you know Hulk Hogan, when he, back when we were doing the Opie Anthony show, he came in. I was like, I thought this guy was like 6'7". Yeah, yeah, and his, But he was like 6'4", and his arms hung down to his knees, though. Yeah. And he ended up saying that because of that finishing movie did where he would leap up in the air and just land on his ass night after night after night, week after week, he lost three inches in height. His yeah, all of his spine, discs. Yeah, got so compacted. Yeah, yeah. Um, all your discs deteriorate from from wrestling like almost every wrestler i know including me i have a bunch of discs they're all fucked up but they're they're okay enough where i can get by and i use machines like there's a machine called a reverse hyper where it sort of decompresses your spine i do all this spinal decompression shit I actually and i get regenikine once a year which is like this um it's like an advanced form of platelet rich plasma i actually got it today i've got like little band-aids <laughs> you're gonna my back. fucking outlive all of us listen i'm i'm fucking <laughs> i've got the cash to pay for this shit i, I fucking take everything i'm like what do you got what do you got that works <laughs> your body's like a resto mod you know <laughs> <laughs> it's like you look at him and he's 50 51 but underneath it's 2019 <laughs> He's got a little iPod jack in his fucking <laughs> chest. <laughs> a resto mod. People don't even know what we're talking about. We took an old car, like my Corvette. That's, well, it's not out there. But my Corvette, uh, that's what it is. It's like a 1965 on the outside. But the inside is all 2000s. It's all, yeah. the suspension is all brand new, modern chassis. Yeah, I like it the underneath. I don't like the interior also to look right. like. Me too. Yeah, it yeah. all has to look like. like yeah. uh Speaking of that, that's another reason why I had to go see the uh, that Tarantino movie twice. The fact that it was fucking amazing was I was so busy looking at all the cars. <clears throat> and it has one of my favorite cars of all fucking time. I'm not a speed guy. I like cruising. And there's a, a 67 Cadillac Eldorado in the color that I want in that. It's one of the meanest looking fucking cars what color Ever. is it in the movie? I don't remember. It's like this. I don't know what. It's like the, a yellow yeah. or something? It, Dean asked me that. He's like, what's the factory color? You know, because oh, he knows no. it. You know, he knows all of that. Yeah. But he, he knows it, right? It's like a, um, it's like this. There it is. Look no, no, that, that's, 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 uh, Leo's that's a hard car. cop. That's a hard cop. Um, Doesn't he have a soft top in that? No. No, you know what I'm thinking of? I'm no, thinking it's, it's of No, it's one of uh, Sharon, Sharon Tate's friends. Just look up Cadillac Eldorado. Because they're just going to have, yeah, the car Brad Pitt was driving. Dude, Leon, this is Leonardo DiCaprio's best work. Oh, he's he amazing in it. Fuck, you got to see it again. He's amazing. I, I'm, it. I'm actually going to see it for a third time to catch all this shit. 
And I don't want to ruin it for anybody. So anybody want? I'm not going to say anything. But uh, so Leonardo DiCaprio has a different one than Brad Pitt does. Well, Brad Pitt's character is driving Leo's car. Oh, it's the yellow one that he's in that in that yeah. picture when he's but, leaning no, out no, the door. No, no, no. But the 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 El Dorado, which I think is a '67, is it, one of Sharon Tate's friends pulls up to her house in it. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. a different scene. Yeah, those old Cadillacs are fucking phenomenal. Good luck getting one of those into the comedy store parking lot, though. There'd be oh, no would. no room for anything else. What I would like to do, yeah, just have the underneath <laughs> everything be brand new underneath. And then just, yeah, just drive in the fucking right lane, smoking a cigar. You can get it done. I know I people. know I can't, but I, that's a slippery slope. Oh, I'm already down it. I know you are. Yeah, you own a warehouse. <laughs> <laughs> that's the slippery slope. So I have my old truck, and uh, like I like going fast. If I was like at a track, like Dean went out and drove a bunch of fast cars out in Vegas, and he was just like, he, he, he posted them too. He goes, uh, was showing how fucking cool it was. And it's like the next time, that, that time I went out there, I took my lovely wife with me, so we were doing, you know, couple shit. I wasn't going to be like, hey, thanks for coming to Vegas. I'm going to go drive some fast cars. <laughs> they have a CVS that's all lit up, the Vegas style. You should check that out, honey. You know, like, where the fuck would that get me? But uh, that was a good trip for us, too, by the way. A good family Vegas trip? Yeah. Uh, it's a good thing to do uh, as a married person to just sort of, like, my mother-in-law watched our kid, and we came out there, and it's fu- it's hilarious. That's nice, like dates. Yeah, and yeah. we no, but we immediately go right back to like we, me and my wife have like ridiculous chemistry, laughing like just totally on the same wavelength, and it just fucking resets. And I I'm, I'm learning now, like you gotta just with the day to day and dealing, you know. My do daughter, you guys do date nights? Do you do a lot of date nights? Yeah, probably not enough. It's like everything. Do you work out? Yeah, yeah. not enough. Do you eat well? Yeah, not enough. And then your relationship becomes like the same way. And I've uh, I finally gotten out of my stupid fucking, you know, die on every hill, fucking argue everything, you know. I'm getting out of that and I'm starting to understand, you know, how to, uh, how to do it. That you're not in competition with your wife. That's what you got to understand. Yeah. Yeah. But then there's also that she's also human. So everything she says isn't right. <laughs> <laughs> so you just have to pick. <sighs> Yeah, you got to pick because uh, I'm not going to be that guy where it's, hey, oh, happy wife, happy life. Oh, those guys are done. I watch whatever TV she wants to watch. Uh, I'm envious of them. Are you? Those because they have the smoothest fucking life. Never lose their house. <laughs> they're just like this. They're like a fucking, uh, you know, those big doorman buildings where I got a package for you, Mr. Rogan. <laughs> like you become that in the relationship. <laughs> you should just say we're like the bell cap and something like that. Uh <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yes. Those life or dormant. Yeah, yeah. Um, they're like in a union. Neutered. Yeah. Uh, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with being a doorman before everybody in a fucking uniform gives me shit. Um, yeah, they're like, you become like that in the thing. But no, we came back and, and uh, last night, you know, uh, before we went to bed, my wife was like glowing. She was like, I had the <sighs> best time. And we barely did anything. We just fucking hung out laughing, you know? You Man, appreciate not, that a lot more once you yeah. have kids because you realize like this is a rare moment. This is hard to do. It's hard to get away. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's hard to connect while someone's going, I want I want a popsicle. Yeah. <laughs> I want a red popsicle. Yeah, well, <laughs> with my kids, they're older, so they, they fight with each other. That's no. mine. No, let me use You're not even using it. It's mine. Yeah. No, you can't use ah! Yeah. And everything is just, you know, they're, they're separated by two years too. So the little one is fierce. Because she always feels like she's getting the short end of the stick from the older one. Right. So she fucking, she stands her ground. She draws a line in the sand and, you know, she's ready that's to throw awesome. down. It's <laughs> awesome. It's crazy. She doesn't know how to apply it yet, but that's going to serve her well. Oh, it'll, she's not taking any shit. I'll yeah. tell you that. But she's a super sweetheart, too. My daughter's at that age, you know, where uh, I used to do a joke bit in my act that, like, I always love toddlers because they're like these little drunk people. <laughs> like, they have no social graces. You're like literally in the middle of a conversation. They come, oh, John, oh, yeah. They just start talking real loud. You can't understand them. Yeah. That's, that's kind of where we're at. But, uh, you know, in, in, in like the best way ever. Um, that is one of the one of the advantages of being an older dad is you, uh, everybody who fucked up being a dad, you know that look on their face, like dude, it goes by so fast, man. I'm telling you, ch- cherish every fucking. They sit there like the ghost of Christmas past. Yeah, 
scaring the shit out of you in a good way, I guess. The cool thing when they get older is you do stuff with them and you take them places and like go on vacations together and hang out with them all day long, 24 hours a day, multiple days in a row. Like we, every summer we go to somewhere in Europe or somewhere, we went to Thailand last year. Thailand and Italy, we did too. I'm too intimidated to go there. Thailand? Yeah. Oh, it's amazing. These people are so nice. They are? So nice. It's hot as fuck and they got weird bugs. And uh, my little one got lit up by bugs, man. Like she, she had an b- allergic reaction to something that bit her, and her whole hand was swollen. It was a real freak out moment. Yeah. Like fuck, we're in Thailand, and something's medically going wrong here. Wow. But it's also weird too. It's like <clears throat> their culture is very odd. Assuming that had a happy ending. Yeah, yeah, it did. Say, yeah, we, kinda... we were at a resort. <laughs> Luckily, built me up to the apex of emotion. <laughs> hey, I uh, was a uh, good. Yeah, so Get some toothpaste the other day. No, we 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 got some medicine and they applied a topical medicine to it and actually went down within you know by the next day it was okay, but it was it was an issue. Yeah, there's scary, a scary well, Th- hours. Thailand's hot, you know, it's muggy and road elephants. We did the whole thing, hang out, hung out in the jungle. It was wild. The sounds that the jungle oh yeah makes. yeah I remember seeing that. Yeah, pictures your, of the elephants. Uh, yeah, no, on your Instagram. Instagram. Yeah. yeah, elephants are cool, man. They're weird. It's a weird little relationship you have with these animals. They're so gentle. Like, as long as they know that you are a kind person and you're, you're taking care of them, you walk. Because, like, the people that run this, they run an elephant rescue thing. It's really kind of cool. I don't cool know about that, Joe. That I'm a kind person? No. <laughs> as long that as an you- elephant is just like, you know what? I don't really feel like yanking these logs up and down this fucking hill. I don't even understand why I'm doing this shit. This guy seems pretty cool. No, 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 not like that. You don't do anything with them other than feed them and you get to ride them. But like, and people are a little bummed out about riding them. And I'm like, I don't really recommend riding them. Like my family wanted to ride them. And, you know, a lot of these people ride. But the, but the whole thing is a rescue thing. They take these animals that are in circuses and all these different sort of mistreated animals and they take care of them and they let them live in a wild environment they roam free yeah. they f- just feed them so the elephants stay by but they go they go off on their own too and then they come back but they have these big piles of sugar cane and so they're eating the sugar cane they're eating they'll just stop while you while you're walking with them and they just rip a fucking tree out of its roots and start eating it you realize wow. how goddamn strong they are they are fucking preposterously strong i wish i i wish that we viewed them more as like roommates yeah. Than like ours. So right. we, we divvied the planet up a little smarter. Yeah. Um, I got to sh- I shut my phone up. I can show you. I, I found this picture on uh, Instagram of this tiger. And the fucking thing is, is what looked like it's legs. Back. It looks like it's doing dips <laughs> and just the fucking muscles. It doesn't even look real. Like, like, like that thing exists on this planet and was just like, was just walking around free that you could just bump into the, I understand, you know, like when people first came out here and they eradicated, uh, that's along the lines of it. I mean, look at that. Fuck. How many pull-ups, <laughs> Joe, do you need to do to fucking look like that? Fuck. Oh my God. Look at the fucking muscles. On you must thing. have seen that one. Did you ever see that one where they were fucking with that tiger and that dude was on the, uh, on and the, the elephant. elephant yeah and this thing took off like jordan in the dunkin contest yeah. and just and every time it reached its apex it kept going up like fucking zion there on, on duke yeah and it barely grazed the guy's arm when it clawed him it tore it apart and yeah, yeah the guy like he had nerve damage and his fucking arm didn't work oh yeah for sure yeah i mean there's a great video a recent video like two weeks ago of these guys on a motorcycle in India, and they're riding on yes. a motorcycle. The, the tiger's chasing them, and the tiger almost gets them. It's full clip chasing them. I actually looked how fast they can run, and I'm surprised because the guy was on like a scooter or something. Yeah, they can go like 40 miles an hour. I think, I think what fucked him up was the surface that he started oh, running on. Right, right, right if he right. was more in his element, they get like you know, a dog in a kitchen gets a little fucking <laughs> whoa. <laughs> I think the tiger did that. They for slide. A, yeah, for a little yeah. bit. Yeah, on the concrete, right? Yeah. Yeah. Or maybe just the sound of the engine was just like, that doesn't sound tasty. Well, it's one of the rare, rare places on earth where tigers hunt people. There's there's a history of them hunting people. They hunt or they come upon oh, them no, and no, go, no. I'll eat that. No, they hunt them. There's an area called the Sundarbans. And the Sundarbans, tigers over the last 200 years have killed more than 300,000 people there. They actively hunt you know, people. Believe it or not, it's a quick death. Oh, Yeah. I yeah. already know what I would ever do if I ever came in contact with the tiger. Just do this? That's exactly what I would do. Give him the neck? <laughs> <laughs> and make some defensive moves, like or offensive moves, just to get yeah. him to go right towards it. Ugh. 
It's yeah. just like the you, all, you UFC guys. You're all like, I would rather get fucking choked out than knocked out. It's the same thing. You just go to sleep. Yeah, you just sleep. I mean, it probably hurts for a second, and then it's over. Uh, it hurts for a second, then as you start to go, I think the last thing that's as bad is the smell of the tiger. Oh, the breath. The, the breath the of death. The gamey. Rotten meat breath. Well, just the fact, oh. you know, they don't really bathe. Do- oh, they swim, don't they? Yeah, they swim occasionally. Yeah, they can swim fast. This is how fast they you can swim. You smell amazing. <laughs> <laughs> that's it <laughs> did you see those two poor women who they were going to take a fucking a uh, hike through the uh rainforest and decided to go themselves no gone what happened they found their clothes where was this which rainforest i i don't know so I, I was right in your out al- right up your fucking alley reason to uh, i was surprised it wasn't on your instagram <laughs> Like that's some sh- that's like there's some Rogan shit right there. <sighs> it's a bummer, man. When people get confused and they don't understand. You you're a moving thing and you don't move quick. And they're they're all about eating moving things. If you're moving, they're trying to eat you. If you if you're by yourself, they're gonna eat you. Well, it's amazing that wherever we started on this planet, that our brain was able to cover for the fact of how fucking slow we are. Mm-hmm. We're slower than squirrels, like everything. everything. Everything is lightning fast out there, except sloths. Sloths, I know, but they they like and that, but that's their job to get eaten. Yeah, they like, like it. Yeah, they're like jalapeno poppers for fucking. <laughs> 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 you, know that, you know that bullshit that you just order. You want to guess? Yeah, fuck it. Let's get that. Let's yeah, have whatever. A sloth. Yeah, yeah. This Before a, you go after the real thing, you're trying to eat. One of my favorite videos is watching uh, harpy eagles kill sloths. They swoop in and snatch them. They're like the largest yeah. eagles in South America. Huge I did a zipline tour in uh, in Costa Rica. I did that. Yeah, and the guy knew how to make the noise of the this this fucking you know, ridiculous wingspan bird that doesn't really exist in that area anymore. But they're just in their DNA for them to freak out. He goes, "It's three toed sloth," and he imitated it. And the fucking thing just just kind of looked around a little bit. <laughs> and then <laughs> it's like, dude, you just gave that thing a mini fucking heart attack. We did a zipline that was one mile. You get on it, you you zip across for one mile. And as I'm sliding on this thing, with my family, by the way, I'm thinking, when was the last time they checked this? Who's checking this? Oh, those are great thoughts to the, have. The fucking ladder was rusted and then la- ratchet bolted. So they had like straps yeah. where they ratcheted where the ladder had rusted. And then they just grabbed a hold of the strap and like clamped down on it and ch- 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 <laughs> tied it to the fucking tree. <laughs> and we're climbing up this and it's like, oh, watch out there. That part's rusted through. Like, what? That's rusted through. And then you get to the top, and they latch you up to this thing. And I'm telling you, you're above the rainforest, and it's just, yeah. And you go for like fucking ten minutes. Just people bzzz. don't understand how high those. Tre- we, we were just in the bullshit. We were just in the the very tippity top of. We were in Costa Rica, so we weren't like in the 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 shit. And I just remember, like the thing where we were doing, you know, the uh, little. Uh, I guess platform that you went up to was so fucking high off the ground and it was a third up the tree. Yeah. Like when we were looking up at the three-toed slot that was over there, it was like another four or 500 feet, it seemed. <sighs> up, it was ridiculous. It was yeah. fucking ridiculous. Yeah. Nature, man. Nature, man. There's a fucking great story recently of a guy. He's a musician and he was recording sounds of nature and he fell asleep and a bear ate him. <laughs> so this recording... Of him getting eaten while he's recording oh. sounds of That's, nature. Bears seem like it's a long death. Oh, yeah. They just eat you. They just hold you down like a salmon and start chewing chunks no. off of you. Oh, yeah, they do. Yeah, because they, they're omnivores. Omnivores are the worst thing to get killed by. You're better off getting killed by a predator because predators generally just want to kill you and kill you as quick as they can. But bears, first of all, they're of no predators other than other bears and humans with rifles and if they're in a place where there's no humans with rifles they're the top of the food chain so they just put a paw down on you so they hold you in place and just start chewing chunks of you just eating chunks of you off the video of the grizzly so man my special <laughs> <laughs> tonight at midnight on netflix do you the- know what my brother called me up one time i i called him after he had watched some video and it was one of those komodo dragons and it somehow grabbed like a deer looking thing, whatever the fuck is in its world that's like that. And it, I'm sorry, people, but it snapped its fucking leg. And he said the thing was laying there and it couldn't move. 
and it just started eating the thing's guts oh. and the deer's sound of, ah, That's ah, it. don't. Yeah. <laughs> Shut that fucking thing off. I don't watch any of that. I don't watch execution videos. I don't want that on my hard drive. Mm. I'm going to bomb tonight watching that. How do you find it that quick? Jesus Christ, this guy's good. He's got him saved. Yeah, there's a, a great one of a Komodo dragon eating a monkey. And uh, it's got, like, look, it might be a baboon. But it's a big... Baboons are no joke. I never knew. When they fucking yawn, you're like, oh, shit, that's like a tiger monkey. It's like a dog monkey. That's what it's like. It's like they a got dude, wolf. those fangs. Yeah, yeah, wolf. Crazy. Right? A wolf. Yeah, like a wolf monkey. Yeah. They eat kids. Somebody's got to have a new band named that. Wolf monkey. Wolf monkey. <laughs> That's a good name yeah. for a band. <laughs> There's a great video of this Komodo dragon. He's got this monkey's feet and tail hanging out of his mouth. He's going, <coughs> just slowly choking this thing down, eating this entire monkey whole. <coughs> and the tail and the little, little feet are poking out. It's like, <coughs> See if you can find that. Show it to Bill. No, I don't want to. I, I honestly don't want to watch. Just put that. it on that one so I, I can don't. See. I don't can you put it on one it. TV. <laughs> can you do that while I talk about my new special coming out? <laughs> paper Tiger. <laughs> Speaking of animals, why'd you come yeah. up? Why Paper Tiger? Ah, uh, because I just think we're in a hilarious time. Because you already took strange time. I have to stop saying like I I like the amount of times I had to stop saying it's it's a weird time. It's just the name of Joe's special because it just is. Like what we're focusing on, I'm like, oh my God, can you fucking believe this? While this real, like half the shit that's going on, if, if, if it's true, is like you could make a Will Smith or a T Tom Cruise movie, one of those end of the world movies where yeah. they accept, you know, it's not going to have a happy ending. And it's just like, it just kind of strikes me, I don't know. And it was also, I just, I wanted people to watch it and have fun. Like, mm -hmm. I'm not trying to fucking hurt anybody. It's not malicious, but yeah. I, I'm doing my job. I'm talking about what's in the news, and I'm fucking around, and it's part that, and then the other part is just me talking about my flaws, my temper, and trying to work that shit out. That's all this fucking thing is, and for some reason, um, not just saying stand-up, just a lot of shit that is not, as far as, like, if you had priorities, you know? Like, if your house just burnt down, you're not being like, God, we, we have to get a new toaster, you know, it's like, no, we need shelter. Like, that's right. the number one thing. But there's all this shit that's like, you know, a line of importance, like line 42 is is getting gassed up to like number seven or number eight or something like that. And I already know people are going to be like, you know, typical white male because you can't like all of that shit. You know, there's just something funny about how overtly, uh, I don't know, I guess um, reversed like. It's like you're doing the same fucking thing and you don't even realize you're doing it. As you're saying, like a lot, some groups of people, not all of them. Like I've been joking how like a lot of feminists are like smart, but it's not the ones that are on TV. It's like sports fans. A lot of sports fans are really smart, but not the ones that call in <laughs> sports talk radio. <laughs> That's perfect. You know what I mean? Yes. It's, it's like when we, when we would do the Opie and Anthony show. Mm -hmm. Okay. Or like Howard Stern, like when he would do, back in the day, when he would do live remotes. I love Howard Stern. I love Opie and Anthony. But like if I was a fan of this show, I don't have time and I'm not going to some fucking mall <laughs> in the middle of the day blowing off work or whatever, because I'm trying to get my own shit going. The people that show up, you love them because they're diehards, but mm -hmm. they're out of their fucking minds. So um, it just has to do with that. I'm kind of... Um, it doesn't necessarily have to do with me, but it does. It's one of, one of those things. And it's also another way of saying that I'm full of shit. And, yeah, you know, you're a paper tiger. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So, The Opie and Anthony days, you remember when they used to have uh, stadium seating, like small stadium seating in the studio? And guys would come in. The, they would let fans come in the studio yeah. and sit and watch the show. Those are the good old days. Yep. I I, every time I go to New York, I, I, there's like, it's like a void. Uh, mm -hmm. Somebody said it perfectly, yeah. like, you know, phantom limb, you know? Yeah. That's what it feels like. And you get, oh, I'm in New York and I'm going to. Uh. Doesn't exist. That was the last show that I used to get up early for. Oh, and, I, and when they were together, before Anthony got kicked out and, yeah. and Opie and Jimmy and Anthony were all together. It was amazing. That was, that was like seeing a band with all the original members on the yes. first fucking couple of albums tour yeah. before David Lee goes solo and then, you know, 
Well, they were the first guys to get thing. ported over to XM too, right? Mm -hmm. They were the first, or I think they were, were they before Howard or around the same time? But they were, they were yeah, the was first. The same? I think my name is, they were on, that was when it was XM and then Sirius. Mm -hmm. before yeah, I feel the, like Howard was on Sirius, they were on XM and then they merged. Yep. Yeah. But they were the first show, the first radio show that let you just fuck around. Like Howard is amazing. Right, greatest radio personality of all time by far. But Howard controlled the show. He had you on. He had the board in front of him. He controlled the board. He asked you mm -hmm. questions. He had an agenda, and you know he was trying to make the show as entertaining as possible. And they got ready. Yeah. O and A. You just fucking come on in, guys. Come on in, Patrice. Come on in, Bill. Ari Shafir, have yeah. a seat. And everybody, you'd be in the room. Ricky Gervais, ten fucking people in the room. Norton. I mean, Norton would be doing his yeah. fucking creepy characters. I mean, it was the the it was it was the birth. <laughs> Jive for Talk me. Jimmy was my favorite one. Oh, he was <laughs> <laughs> Jive Talk Jimmy. Yeah, remember that? Yes. He didn't do it enough. That's like a deep cut Jim Norton. Yeah. Jive Talk Jimmy was one of my favorite ones. Yeah, it was what? so silly, which is my favorite thing ever. S highly intelligent people being silly. Yeah, is one of my favorite things ever. And I, I Jim. Was the and Patrice was sort of the king of that. Oh yeah, super, super, super next level smart and just silly, really silly. I think when Howard went from terrestrial radio to to serious, it was like he died because I didn't have until I got serious in my car. So that's like my favorite thing about my car because I listen to them every fucking morning. If I you know and I got to get yeah. them, I'm up and it's like the old days, like when I first came to New York and I get to listen to it. They and were the birth of podcasts, whether they re realize it or not. They were the birth of podcasts because O and A was like a podcast, mm -hmm. like this podcast. Like we didn't even talk about what we were going to talk about. There's right. no, no fucking discussion whatsoever. I mean, right. obviously, you and I don't have to do that, right. but we wouldn't anyway. We just come in here and shoot the shit. That's all they ever did. Come on in, right. shoot the shit. What the fuck's going on? You know, Anthony yeah. would have a gun on him. Look, fucking <laughs> show you. <laughs> <laughs> That's a fucking gun everywhere to this day. That guy my doesn't favorite, go to piss in the middle my, of the night without a gun. My uh, favorite deep cut Anthony character was the guy with giantism. Did you ever hear him do that guy? No. Ah, uh, no, he did. I it. can't do it. You know, with the giantism and they get that voice. You know, by the time I was eight, I was nine feet tall. I can't do it. He would, <laughs> <laughs> he would do this fucking thing. Uh, I'd always go in there dragging ass, and then like something like yeah. that would happen, and then it just felt like two in the afternoon somehow. And you look at your watch, it was like fucking seven o two in the morning. Do you remember so, when Anthony did live from the compound? He did a he built a studio in his basement. That's when I was like, going, this is not going to last. This guy's literally building. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like it's like we're in business selling ice cream and I'm building my own ice cream parlor at home. No, no, Joe, I'm I'm, I'm in this business with you. I knew like like this. They were like, gonna fall apart. You mm. know what's funny is what did that show and is also what made it great. Yeah, like you know how they used to play the oh shit they used to play the, the sorry about that they used no to worries. play the uh, the Clint Eastwood uh, yeah thing. I always thought the theme to that show should have been the wheels on the bus go, go round, round and round because it was just like. <laughs> Yeah, and the thing was, you were on the bus, but you were outside it. You were yeah. hanging. It was you almost like uh, I always felt like when I went in there, that Raiders of the Lost Ark. You know when Harrison Ford's on the hood and you're grabbing onto the hood <laughs> ornament, trying not to go underneath it. <laughs> and some days you hung on, and then other days, yeah. Except it didn't have the happy ending. You didn't have the whip to hang on to it. You just fucking. Do you remember over. the day we were there and Pat from Munaki threw up? In um, are you kidding? Pat me? That, Duffy's that, mouth. That was your idea. Yeah. And then that dude Than Nathaniel came. He was the one that coined it. The baby. I got credit for some reason. I think Dan's voice sounded like me. He came. Oh, up he came up. I've, the, I've been saying it's you. No, your idea was your idea. You were yeah. like the only thing that could top this. <laughs> for those who didn't see it, it's such a brilliant idea. It was the eggnog drinking contest, and you had to do a double shot like it was bourbon, but it was eggnog, like every 30 seconds. Well, Pat and the returning champion was Pat from Munaki, who had diabetes <laughs> and lost a toe to it already. <laughs> it was just sitting there. And then he continued <sighs> to drink it. Oh, yeah. To do the bit that you came up with. <sighs> I yeah. mean, there has to be like a... Um, you know when like a broadcaster can get into the sports hall of fame just because you know he never played the game, but he he like 
you know, because of what he added to it. I always thought that Pat Munaki should have been like they should have been like like a like a Chick Hearn, Johnny Moe sort of award that he fucking cont- with with his <laughs> his health continued <laughs> to drink. I remember when when people posted that video. <sighs> Everyone was saying, fake, this isn't real. And that made me enjoy it real. I was like, no, that was real. And I was there. <laughs> there was plastic bags all over the ground. Remember, they, they, they put plastic everywhere all over the ground because they knew that people were going to throw up. They had the garbage can ready. And then Pat Duffy leans his head over the edge of the garbage can. And then Pat from Unaki just, here comes. <clears throat> you see him? Uh, and then it keeps coming. It keeps coming. It's like way crazier than Stand By Me. It was like a hydrant. Me. You just yes. went freak and it just <laughs> fucking came out and then somebody kept shutting it off. And every time, I mean, it was like a... It there looked, it is. Uh, there it dude, is. I can't, I can't you watch can't this. You can't watch this? I, you know, I still can't tell the story. If I tell it in detail, I start gagging. Oh, see, Fear Factor killed all that in me. I never... Dude, I don't I'll, know. T- I'll tell the one that makes me gag. I start to gag. Is when there was the dude... <laughs> I can't fucking watch it. <laughs> it was tr- it was tremendous. Do you? I say I'll say it real quick. Just okay, to plow through it. You look, you're tearing up. <laughs> <laughs> there was a dude who got knocked out. So then, what he did was he started. He puked into a pitcher. He puked into a pitcher, and then he was drinking his own puke, <laughs> trying to make the other people puke. <laughs> so then somebody dared this guy who had to take a swig from it and he had like this hipster viking level beard and he <sighs> I can't do it you're gonna throw up I can't do it this is like fucking scrub. 10 years later he took this viking level swig he just threw oh. it back so he gave himself like kind of like a facial with it and then he puked into the picture <laughs> I think and I remember it was in his beard there's a point in that podcast in, in that pocket in that show where I almost puke yeah that's a crazy thing about seeing so going, many people oh, puke. Oh, Bill's going to go. Bill's going to I was like <laughs> hanging on to the fucking table. Yeah, we didn't realize that at the time. But those are some of the greatest moments of our life. You but know? you got to forgive, forgive yourself that because you were in the moment. Oh, yeah. I was feeling like melancholy when I was in Vegas. And I, and I had, you know, I had this, uh, I was sitting in my room smoking a cigar with uh, Bobby Kelly, Rick D'Elia, you know, uh, from the Boston mm-hmm. scene, right? Uh, and we were sitting there and I was looking down at the strip before they came over and I was thinking about the first time I came out there it was right, right before they imploded the sands or the dunes or something. And they were starting to implode those old ones and, uh, just walking up and down the strip and the real was the new hot one, uh, uh, casino and just all the great fucking times that I, and crazy fucking stories and all that. And then just walking around Vegas being old now and seeing all these young people like, and you want to stop them and just be like, dude, if you could, there's any way to take this in, do it. Because, you know, at my age, if I was to continue doing that, you're just a creep. And I, <laughs> I, and I really respect younger people where it's just like, this is their time. Let them have it. That's their club. Yeah. Don't be standing in there with your white whiskers and shit. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> listen, trying to listen to their DJ music. Just get the fuck out of there. Let them enjoy their generation's drugs and let them have their fucking stories and just, yeah. Yeah. So, There's no way you could impart that on anyone though. Tell them to soak it up and enjoy it. I had moments where I remember thinking when I was young, like, wow, this is a wild moment. Well, I remember you that night after the, the, uh, the baby bird. We, you were at Caroline's. You were at Caroline's, and I went down there, and you had this that, that fucking grin on your face. You're like, <laughs> you're like, that was great radio. That was great radio. <laughs> I was just like, <laughs> and I, I remember. Oh, I told that. I told the whole fucking story. I came home. Nia had just started living with me, and uh, her friend was there, and I was telling them the story of what I saw that day. And I was laying on the ground, crying, laughing, telling, and, and then this guy did this. Do you remember the guy who was fucking, uh, he would do his shot, and when anybody would puke, he would stand over in the corner and not face them. He was facing the corner, so we started calling him Blair Witch. <laughs> everybody, everybody got there. So I'm crying, laughing, and then gagging as I'm telling the story. And then they weren't laughing, which made it even funnier to me. And then I just remember a friend at one point just was like, she was like, where do they find these people? And then that was that just sent me over the top. I was like, I don't know. Just crying, <laughs> laughing. But God bless them. Yeah, where did they find these people? 
Well, that was the thing of like shock radio. Shock radio gets such a derogatory. It's got a, such a derogatory connotation, you know. Shock jocks, shock radio. Oh, great, shock radio. When you're a young guy, and you're a part of that, and you're there in the moment, it's one of the greatest moments of your life. Yeah, it's so because it's my so thing wild. Is, is you're not shock if there's thought behind it. Shock is just like, oh, what happened? Fuck those people. That's right. just basic right. level yeah. shit. Like I remember yeah. when I was coming up, you know, and you had just torn through the Boston scene, and then you you got on uh, some show. It wasn't it wasn't news radio. It was something else. Hardball. It, yeah, and um, you were coming to the Kowloon. It's the first time I was going to see you do a set, and all these guys are, oh, he's, he's so dirty, so dirty, blah 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 blah. And I watched your set. And it's like, this guy isn't dirty. There's like thought behind this. Like anybody can do like a hand job joke, but your joke was like, you said, you ever a woman give you a hand job? It's like brushing your teeth with your left hand. <laughs> and I'm like, that's a fucking killer joke. It just happens to be about a hand job. And some people can't separate that. Yeah. Well, so, that, was that, ba- that was back in the day where there was still a bunch of guys that were left over from the days where Stephen Wright made it by being on The Tonight Show. And there was this weird feeling to the air. You know, and they talk about it in stand, when Stand Up Stood Out, Fran Salamita's documentary, mm-hmm. which is an amazing documentary. Yeah, I love that. But those guys before that were just wild. They were just comics. They were doing blow. Yeah. They were getting in fights. They were chaotic. And then Stephen Wright got on The Tonight Show and became a fucking superstar. I mean, a gigantic national superstar. And everybody else was like, hey, what the fuck? What about me? And I came along after that. And there was this remnant of that there. I remember, uh, you remember Chris Zito? Yeah. Chris Zito was giving me advice when I was an open micer. He was like, you can't swear. If you swear, you're never going to get on TV. He was telling me all this shit. And it's like, in his eyes, he was doing me a service. Right. Because that was in it his eyes. It came from a good place. It came from a good place. Right. In his eyes. But I was like, fuck, he's going to make me quit. Because like, this is what I want to do. I'm like, I, go, right. I, I grew up watching Dice Clay and Sam Kinnis. And he goes, well, you're not Dice Clay. I'm like, okay. It's like, well, neither were they until they were. But it was bad advice from a guy who hadn't made it, right? He hadn't made it. But he was, at least he was a professional. And I was as far from making it as humanly possible. I was an open micer. And I remember I went off stage one night and and he goes, Joe fucking Rogan. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Joe fucking Rogan. (laughs) Did he say fuck enough? Like in his eyes, he was like, look, I'm just telling you this because I I care. Like you're, you're fucking up your career. I was like, all right. So I, I had it in my head. I was like, well, I'm, I, I'm not going to do this then. In my head, I was like, I'm not, I don't want to be that right. guy. Did you ever notice? I'm not that guy. I'm, I'm, uh, that wasn't me. I wanted, I liked talking about shit that made my friends laugh when we were all sitting around drinking. Right. That's what was, that's why I was in it. I was in it to talk about wild shit. Right. It didn't mean that you couldn't be clever and talk about wild shit, but I had never fit in anywhere in my life. So the idea of me fitting in, right. like on television, that's almost like too weird for me. But I like in defense to. of that, there was like nine thousand stand-up shows on TV that you could get on, and you could become. It wasn't just the Tonight Show because the Tonight Show was was the the biggest thing. Yeah. But then there was the comedy on the road. There was even get the improv. There half was hour comedy hour. Half hour comedy. There was all of this shit, and um, <clears throat> so that's what they were guiding towards. And then I had the tail end of that. And then what well, you you started in 90? 92. 92. Oh. So when I came it was the tail end of that work clean and then it was uh you know talk about your family so they can build a show around you so you can do a sitcom and I remember thinking like oh. I don't want to do a sitcom. Yeah, like, you can't say that. Everybody had this idea in their head that there was only one way to do it. The beautiful thing about all that shit imploding is that there's none of that now. Now comedy is comedy and when you see kids coming up now you know, you, see, you go to the, see the guys at the store that are like doormen and open micers. And I say guys, girls too. Allie Makovsky, I take her on the road with me all the time. And she's 23. You know, she's just getting it together now. She's in that stage now. She's like five years in. They just want to do comedy, man. These kids just want to do comedy. Well, there's people now who, because comedy's doing so well, stand up. There's people who like weren't comedians, made it as something else, and now st- are thinking about doing stand up. Right. Yeah. Do you guys how lucky we are that we're doing it now? That's what I would think. I, I said that to, to, to my wife when I was in Vegas. I was like, you believe I get to do this? Yeah, I love it. And I'm going to hang and, and fucking- <laughs> As long as I've been doing it, I still love it. I love it as much now as ever, maybe more now than ever. 
I mean, I don't have to do it. I do. I do. I'll do five, six shows a fucking week in town, and I love it. No, that's why you're great. Because I always felt the guys that uh, that never stop going to the club. It's it, it, look. If you continue yeah. to tour and you become like a draw, you don't have to go to the clubs in L.A. But you pay a. I feel you pay a price for that because. Those kids coming up, you're getting something from them too. As yes. much as they're watching you, going, "Oh wow, you know, you're that guy that I saw, and and you know, now I'm doing a show with you." And it's just like, kid, you're keeping me young, because like, just being around them, you stay current. Yes, and it's why, like, why Dom Irera kills just as hard in 2019 as he did in 2009, 99, 89, is because that fucking guy never stop going to the gym yes and stays in there so i get <clears throat> something out of going to see uh, i get you know something out of watching dom out of watching you and then out watching some new kid coming up and just being in all of that yeah keeps you like current because if you don't you start getting like a must there's a like a fucking you know that old person dying smell <laughs> starts to <laughs> start yeah. wafting on your act yeah, if you're only doing it to your crowd, too, I think there's a problem there, too. The, one of the beautiful things about the store is there's 15 guys on the show that night. They're there to see everybody. Right. They, they look at the lineup. They go, oh, shit, Bill Burr. Oh, shit, Chris D'Elia. Oh, Nikki Glazer's on. They, they see all these great I comics Chris on D'Elia. there. I do, too. Chris D'Elia is like, uh, like from the get-go. Like I could see, like, you know, it reminded me like of a Boston guy where just like it's like this guy's a legit headliner. Just trying to kill. Mm -hmm. Just trying to kill. That's all he's doing. No, and then his concept of killing, I thought was Boston level. Oh, yeah, for sure. Well, it's these, you know, and uh, particularly because he's always at that the right store. That right there? That yeah. right there is The me. last match? No, but that right there is, is how I live my life. A match? The, the hardest fucking way to do something. Why do you do that? <laughs> I do a lot of things that way, but not when it's ineffective. I mean, that's one of the reasons why I bow hunt. Well, that's where we're deep. Yeah, see, I like that. Like, I, I feel if I was going to go out and go kill something cute and fuzzy, if I fucking had a, uh, you know, total hypocrite because I am a meat eater anyways, if I used a bow and arrow, I, it would feel like an accomplishment. I watched Ted Nugent kill a bear, which I could never do, you know, when there's all these fucking places to just get a chicken sandwich. <laughs> like, do I really need to make a fucking, you know... A bear double cheeseburger. <laughs> Do you want to try some? I have bear sausage in the freezer back there. Would you try it if I gave it to you? No. Really? No, because I <clears> went to the zoo one time and I saw this bear. And it was funny because it was sitting half in the water and half out and had its arms, its arms, its front legs fucking like, it looked like it was sitting in a jacuzzi. Like a lounge. And we pulled up on the bus <clears throat> to look at it. And it was just, the way it looked, I kind of locked, I met eyes with the thing and I knew what it was thinking. Pull like, out the buddy, video of you know the bear something? killing the deer in the backyard while it's eating it alive, and the deer screaming. <laughs> Why? This is Why? Because you need to know what a bear really is. When you see bears in real life, you go, "Oh, that's what that thing. It's a fucking killing machine." You think the bear machine. would just punch it in the head to stop hearing Look it? Look at this. See that? Look at that thing. No, it's getting it, it by the neck. <laughs> no, it's taking chunks out of it, bro. Believe me. The, the reason why that thing's screaming is because it's biting its back. Okay, that's enough. That's a bear. That sounds like me trying to touch my toes every morning. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what's hilarious? Do you know what my daughter does? When, when she, she likes to stretch with me. She thinks it's funny. And she makes those noises because she thinks she's supposed to. So she goes, she, when she goes, she goes, I want to stretch Dada. And then she goes, oh, oh. Like I have like a foam roller. And I'll, she'll come walk in the room and she'll look at me and she'll smile. And it's funny, she sits on it because she doesn't know how to use it. And she sits down and she just goes, oh, oh. That's hilarious. <laughs> and my wife laughs at me. Like, That's She's hilarious. imitating how old you are. <laughs> <laughs> my kids are allowed to hit me as hard as they can. We, uh, I, I, I teach them. You know, they've taken martial arts classes, but I teach them. And uh, one That's of the right. things I do is I have them leg kick I need some advice me. in that area because I want my daughter to know how to defend herself. Jiu-jitsu. Uh, yeah. I'll, I'll give you. I'll, I'll get you a good school near you, but I let my kids leg kick me full blast, just full blast, and I show them how to do it where the shin you slams into the center. No, I let them fucking slam into me. Well, I've men do it. I mean, I've been kicked by a lot. Of I people. know, but there's an attrition to that. 
No, you're fine. That's right. You're 2019 on the inside. I forgot. <laughs> the rest the rest of mod. Mod. He's got <laughs> resto mod legs. I let them. I let them slam their shit. It fucking hurts, man. But I'm, I'm letting them know. Like if anybody ever fucks you, if ever, somebody fucks you over, some kid wants to get into a fight, some girl is picking on you, slam one of these bitches right into her fucking thigh. Like it hurts me. Debate over. Yeah. If you teach them how to like defend themselves it's it's also important that they Makes understand sense. what it feels like to be in conflict with someone like when I, I enrolled them in martial arts classes when they were young like my one daughter was four the other one was six when they first started doing it and it's cool to watch them grapple and do these things i'm like this is what's good is like you know what it's like to struggle with someone this is not an alien thing for you to struggle with a person when i watch my youngest daughter grapple with this boy and trip him and slam him onto the ground and get on his knee and then the instructor's like good job try again and they're doing it again like you know what it's like because so otherwise, muscle memory. Yeah, yeah, well, otherwise it's a it, well, it's it your mind. Yeah, your mind doesn't know what happens when someone's trying to do something to you. Whereas if you've done it, it's not <laughs> alien. I mean, it's not like you should do it. You definitely shouldn't do it to someone if they don't want to do it to you. But if someone's if someone senses that you're scared of conflict, it's one of the surest signs you're going to get fucked with. And that was me a lot of my don't life. Don't need to explain that to me. <laughs> well, it was me a lot of my <laughs> life, man. Love that. I've had both. You know, I I went from being a kid who was terrified of conflict to being a martial arts champion. The reason why I became a martial arts champion is because I was being picked on all the time. Right. Kids were always fucking with me. I was like, I don't like this. I'm like, so I'm going to become what I'm terrified of. Oh, I should have done that. <laughs> I was just like, well, school ends at three. <laughs> we can realistically only do this for another two hours and 45 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I went the other way. You remember ways. that? Remember that? And they used to, have to teach you, like, and they would have the two people, you know, you know what, Eddie right way, you know, Mikey bad way. We should do that. Do a little, uh, we'll make a kid's book. Have me, young me with a fucking orange afro. <laughs> going, there's only two hours and 45 minutes, not knowing that. No, in two hours and 45 minutes, all the authority is going to be gone. Right. You know? Then That's lawless. the scary thing now about with mixed martial arts going mainstream. Okay, and there's no ref to to get in there. Like that video I told you. Yes, about. Yeah. that's what is scary. And then everybody like uh, like I think with young kids, it's like, oh, I want to be the guy going, oh, you know that that's who they want to be. No one right. wants to be the ref to jump in and say stop. They want to uh, yell out world star, world star. They want to do that, and they all want to have it, and then post it, yep. and get it to have some hits. Like that's like, you know. I mean, I, I'm not shitting on it because that's what I would be doing if I was young. I got a video pulled off of Facebook and Instagram, and I got a, a community strike, community guideline strike, because uh, it was violence against minors. But it was a kid who was picking on another kid. He wouldn't stop fucking with this kid. And then finally the kid just pushed him away and then put up a stance like he's ready to fight, and the kid came after him. He kicked him, grabbed him, slammed him on the ground, and got him in an armbar. And you know, oh, I saw that. Yeah. yeah, that was great. It was a fucking amazing video, and the kid didn't even get hurt, but it was a lesson. I'm like, this is why it's good to learn martial arts. Yeah, because this kid was a cunt, and he was fucking with this kid, and the kid knew how to fight. Right. So I put it up there. Like, look, this is this is the benefits of learning a martial yeah, art. Yeah, and then those people who who their hearts in the right places don't post that because that's going to make yes. kids fight other kids. It's like, no, that's that's you're not going to like through words and hashtags stop having kids be kids. Be kids, and it's just, it's gonna happen, and uh, yeah, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's people gonna happen. Are, I mean, the, the, the idea that you're gonna protect kids from reality by that is just so it's just so silly. You're you're not you're not gonna stop people from doing things to people. You you gotta understand what is happening when people do those things, and how you can learn how to fight so you can mitigate most of it. And not all. And then of the it. best part is other kids see you do that, and then you become the kid. Oh, don't fuck with that kid. Exactly. Yeah. Kid will dislocate yeah. your elbow. Yeah, that's who you want to be. Yeah. You want to be the nice kid who can fight, so everybody leaves you alone. You know. I went through the that's entire. A great, that should be written somewhere. Yeah. You want to be the nice kid that knows how to fight. There's a lot of those kids now. There's so many more. It's getting in a fight in school today with someone you don't know is a risky proposition. There's so many kids that know jujitsu. So many kids that take Muay Thai. Everything is on another level. You should yeah. see these fucking kids coming up playing drums. Oh, yeah? Just the shit that they can do is it's fucking in bananas. Really? Nobody could do that. This kid's doing shit that's beyond, 
as far as um, independence, okay, what they're doing is beyond what I saw a lot of guys when I would like when I first started buying VHS tapes, drum instructional videos. Now they don't have the seasoned, they don't necessarily have the feel and all of that and know how to apply it necessarily in a musical sense with the because that just comes with experience but what they have in their fucking arsenal for chops is fucking insane because of youtube you think yeah because you're jamming with the world now right so it becomes oh oh yeah. i'm gonna try that and i'm gonna incorporate you know now the people who do it the most basic level me is i just see what somebody does and i try to learn how to do it and i've only now since doing comedy Going like, oh, I'm like a joke thief, except I just took that guy's groove that he just came up with. It's you're supposed to be inspired by it to turn it into something else or, or work on something else that you're doing. That's like another level that, you know, eventually you get to, I think, as a musician you do, um, as far as me watching them, not as a musician. But like just seeing what these kids can physically fucking do. It, it's inc- the guitar players, the bass players. The I saw f- there's one that went viral. There was a, there, this little... Girl from like Japan played good times, bad times, like it was nothing. And Robert Plant is watching it, like going, it's yeah. And he's used something, yeah, she, it's like she's falling off a log, which meant like it was nothing. It was nothing to her. I've been trying to play those fucking triplets my whole life and I still don't have it down. I'm just like, fuck. What is it about? Is it just kids learn quicker because they don't have as much shit in their head? Well, back in the day, when you heard something, first of all, you had cassette tapes. So you had to keep fucking rewinding it. And you're, you're at the mercy of, of your own bedroom. Like, there's nobody in there. Okay? And now, and then when you have to add the record, you could maybe slow it down. Okay? But even then, you had, you know, you're slowing it down. There's still the bass. You're trying to get everything in it. It's, it's hard to fucking hear. Nowadays, somebody who's a fucking expert or whatever, a so-called expert because, you know, the guys who actually play go, you know, there's a lot of people teaching who don't know what the fuck they're doing, like the, with the martial arts shit that you show. They'll break the whole this fucking thing. Yeah. Is this her? Yeah. In her little cute fucking <laughs> she's adorable. little girl socks. Look at those fucking triplets she's doing. It's look like it's nothing. Socks. <laughs> um, look at her socks. Look at her bag. Of, look at her face. Oh, my God. Yeah. It's adorable. No, she's, she's killing it. That's the thing, too, is she actually, she's not just doing what John did. She's, pl- she's playing it. Is she playing two Led Zeppelin? Is that why you can't? Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. is that why? Okay. Yeah, you can't play the. I think actual. she's smiling like we yeah. having a good. That's the look I had in face when I, somebody gave me an ice cream. How old when, do you think she is? Seven, eight. Wow! Look at that. She's a killer. <laughs> <sighs> I yeah. think it's awesome that you're into music. It's a, another thing. Like, and I, I was thinking that too when you were taking me up in the helicopter ride. Like, you do these other things, and you get really into them. I'll tell you what's crazy. Right now, I'm going for my instrument rating. That's to basically fly in, like, uh, like if you were to come into a city, and, like, the whole city's covered with clouds, and you can't fucking see anything. Ooh. How to use your instruments. Yeah, this is, this is what separates the men from the boys, right? So it's something that was really intimidating, so finally I decided to do it. So the guy I'm taking the lessons from... Uh, I, I, I don't know if I should say this. I just don't want to blow up people. I never know what, right. how much private they want to be. So I fucking go in there because somebody goes, all right, I know, I know the guy. I know the guy. I know the fucking guy. My instructor goes, I got the best fucking guy in LA. So I go to his house because I'm going to fly on a simulator, which is going to save me a ton of fucking money um, initially and then eventually. So you know what the fuck you're supposed to be doing when you start spending a bunch of money what flying What does the simulator look like? His simulator is literally a computer screen. He just has like a like an airplane yoke and a, a throttle thing. That's all it is. But it's getting you to look at like you have a six pack of gauges and then you have these other two, uh, these these uh, your OBS or whatever. It's a bunch of shit. I don't want to fucking try to explain here. But you're looking at that. That becomes your eyes. That becomes looking out the window is looking at your fucking gauges. And it's unbelievably claustrophobic and fucking terrifying if if you got into – that type of weather and you don't know what the fuck you're doing that's how you die okay now uh so anyways i go over to this guy's fucking house he's hey how you doing oh you know i'm so and so what's going on i walk into his house he's got a whole music studio in there with like a fucking grammy he has this whole other fucking life where he he like won a grammy last year for writing a song in some major fucking uh uh superhero movie and 
he's like a like a prodigy piano player and then we go in the and he know and he's also he got into flying and just took it to the level that he became an instructor and i just sit across from the guy in awe going all of that is fucking in that in that it's fucking unbelievable like the, what what a, if you put your mind to shit what you can accomplish is crazy uh, or you see, you know, it's really meeting somebody who's doing that inspires you like, oh, all right, I think I can do this. So like before I came over, I was like outlining like fucking chapter four in the fucking thing, but there's all like gauges and shit and I'm little question marks and stuff. It's like, all right, I'm going to figure out how to do this. And it's becoming less intimidating, but I haven't gone up yet. But just as far as like getting back to like these kids, because that the fact that she's eight and can do that is she hasn't got credit card debt. She's not in some fucking relationship dating some loser kid who's playing videos all day, <laughs> games all day, and she has to come up with her half of the rent. How do I? Uh, she has this whole fucking yeah. wonderment, yeah. and shit is like like kids, like they're positive that like stuff is possible. It's yeah. fucked. Do you wish you could do that? Just have nothing but one thing to concentrate on, just completely free of all the nonsense of life. I, I'm not wired that way. It's weird. My, I think that's why I like. I'm not into speed when driving. I like to do it every once in a while, but like, I like cruising along because it, it relaxes me. Yeah, and kind of shuts down the fucking thunder and lightning of like, oh, let's do this, let's do this for ten minutes, and I'll do this for fucking six minutes, and blah 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 blah, and all that shit. So, yeah, I drive in like the right lane. Well, you and I, <laughs> you and I are very similar in that way. That we have a bunch of other shit that we do. You get into shit like heavily, yeah. heavily into something else. Yeah, I, if I, if I yeah. get into it, I get into it. it. It does hurt me a little bit because I'm starting to find like I don't know what's going on in the world, which is scary as a comic. So I, I got to dip back in. But It's healthier though. But, but my wife, but you also have to know what's going on. You kind of got to know who's current in music. Yeah. Like I learned that when I, I tried, I needed a reference for a pop star and I did it at a college in like uh, like four or five years ago or whatever, and the last time I did a fucking college gig. And uh, I used Britney Spears as a reference, and they're all looking like it just died. <laughs> and I was like, oh, wait a minute. She's like mid-30s, divorced mother of two. <laughs> <laughs> but in my world, she was still 19. Yeah, we were looking at it, Instagram numbers. Who was it? What was the, the, the uh, Selena Gomez? Oh, her and Ariana Grande are up, but yeah. Cristiano Ronaldo was the, was the top. Right, right, player. right, but singers. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah like 190,000 million fucking Instagram. I mean, she's got 160 or some it's crazy like 130 shit. 130 and 150 or something like that. Fucking yeah. insane. Handling like, that in her 20s. Oh, how do you not be crazy? And good luck when you're older. You know, Justin Bieber had a post the other day on his Instagram talking about all the drugs that he did when he was younger and how much it fucked him up and... Now he's got a relationship with the Lord and he's got, you know, he's married and he's trying to be a normal person. Yeah. But he's struggling with the fact that he was insanely famous when he was a kid. Yeah. That is that's a, not, that's not something I would, you know, I, I like seeing people become successful, but that's not something I would, I would wish on somebody. No, it's not like healthy. You almost wish like he made it now. Yes. But even then, I mean, he's still a kid. I mean, he's like yes. 24, 25. But better now yeah. than making it at six. You know, when you're a little kid and you become famous, like, and you're the one calling the shots, you realize all these people are, are you're responsible for their income. Yeah. They Your need brain's you. still developing and you have everybody saying yes around yeah. you. Yes. His brain is still developing now. His, your frontal lobe isn't even fully formed until you're 25. He's I was going to say that, but I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> he's a baby. He's a fucking young boy, but he's, you know, trying to figure it out. You know, I mean, they've, he's already, I mean, they were roasting him on Comedy Central four years ago. It's crazy. And he's, he's he already had like $900 million in the bank. Yeah. It's, uh, th th that. He had accomplished enough by like 22 to get roasted. Yeah. I mean, most people get roasted. They're like fucking my age. Alec Baldwin, they the one they just did. Yeah. 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 I love that guy. Big fan of his. I don't know him. Do you know him? Are you no, I, you know, know him I actually from? was on a flight one time and he was sitting next to me. Really? And I was like, I'm not going to talk to him. I'm not going to bug him. And then he just leaned over with that matinee idle voice. He's like, do you fly often? I was like, yes, <laughs> I do. <laughs> <laughs> and what I found with him was if you just talked about anything other than him yeah. or him being him, he would totally talk. But the second I ever veered it towards what he did, he, he just didn't have any interest in talking. So I was like, all right, I get it. I'm I get tired it. of it. Let's, let's. Uh, yeah. So the time I did talk, I just would talk about. You know, uh, 
anything but that. Well, have you ever sat next to someone who's like, hey, how do you come up with your material? Yeah. I'm like, oh, it's fucking red this. eye. Yeah. Right here. Oh. This is how I come up with it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what was that one guy? That was, Where are you going, Bill? What was that one story? Oh, God. Oh, that guy. That poor guy. He was on something. He got all paranoid and he had some sort of military background. He, he had was going to save idea. the whole plane. He uh, had this idea that you were a bad guy. That was a hilarious story, though. Yeah. He had the idea that I was acting fidgety and nervous. Because he was fidgety and nervous. No, I'm also a fucking lunatic. I was probably fucking thinking of 50 things at the same time. I was probably <laughs> was acting that way, but he took it to the whole level. Yeah, he stopped the plane. <sighs> oh, God. We pulled over. Because oh, he goes, if you right. don't fucking, I'm going to push that button. I was like, fucking push it. Oh, that's right. I forgot that whole story. He was a military guy, right? Oh, Jesus. People that think they have good instincts and their instincts suck are the worst. Like people think I'm, I'm, I've just got a good way of reading people. Like, actually, you don't. Yeah. Well, there's two ways to go into something humbly and say I don't know shit. And as you learn shit, and you think, oh, and I'm starting to, know, oh my god, there's all this other stuff I don't know. Yeah. And then there's other people they learn a little bit, and then they're this authority. Trump. And then you get a couple of drinks at them, <laughs> and uh, yeah, next thing you know, a plane has to pull over. <laughs> How do they resolve that? I don't remember. I don't really remember either. I, I, I just <laughs> wasn't something I dwelled on. I just remembered the stewardess coming over, talking to us like we're children. Like, are you two going to be okay next to each other? And I'm just like, I'm fine. I don't know what this guy's doing. And um, he continued to uh, yammer at me until he just passed out. And then I think when, he, when we finally landed, he was kind of sober. And um, I think he was starting to feel a little stupid, I, th I think. <laughs> <laughs> We've all been there. Yeah. We've all been there. Yeah. Sure, he's a nice guy. Maybe not. Maybe he's Maybe dead. Maybe not. Maybe. There you go. There's one way to do it. <laughs> <laughs> That's another ending to the movie. I don't think that will test well with the- Maybe he went walking through the woods one day. All right, I'm going to let you introduce the next topic. I don't know <laughs> where to go with that guy's fucking... <laughs> Maybe you got eaten by a bear. That's a way to go, boy. If you had to be eaten by any animal, what would it be? Oh, the bigger, the better. Shark. Over, over quick. Uh, no, Great not what? shark. I don't like that because I don't like my head being here and the evil's under here. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> just... And it, it's going to take a bite out of me first to see if I'm edible. Oh. And then you're just sitting there, you know, missing a chunk of your leg going, please don't let me taste good. Please don't let me taste good. <laughs> let him just fucking leave. It's interesting. Sharks used to be, if you caught a shark, people were happy. You got that fucking thing out of the water. Good. Like when fishermen would bring in a shark, people would get excited. Yeah. Now you're a monster. Well, there's, uh, there's this thing that I follow about sharks on Instagram. And like, it's fucked. This person found a tiger shark, an 18 footer or some shit, right? And uh, he, she went down. The, she somehow gained this thing's confidence and had like a fish, some fishing line, and like took it out. Okay, this this can't be real. And then somehow she ran into the thing again <laughs> in the ocean, and she was petting it like a fucking lap dog. Trying really? to suggest that this thing knew her, knew her, and was happy and respect. I mean, the way they cut it together, and of course, the music always takes you emotionally where they want you to go. But I was just watching that whole thing, going like, "It's good that you did that, but I don't think you're at the. I can now. This tiger shark has talked to all the other tiger sharks. No, no, no. Bill's cool. Do you remember Beastmaster? Remember that TV show? No. There was a dude who was like a jack dude. And he had like big bracelets on. And he would mm -hmm. fucking commune with the animals, and they would like land on his shoulder and shit. Like eagles would land on his arms, yeah. and all the animals would listen to him. That's it was not a, a that's, really stupid show. Because there's no, there's nothing humble about that name. Beastmaster. Beastmaster. See, me? they're they're allowing you to live, and you're, you're got, now you're is. acting. <laughs> yeah, you got to have the Tarzan hair. Who was the guy in Beastmaster? Who was it? A TV show? No, nah, it was a. I think that, it was that looks a TV, like a TV show. show. I think it was a TV show. It was a TV show. That guy like had this <laughs> like special to... relationship with the fucking with the animals. They all listened to him. <laughs> I 
Oh yeah, I didn't know he had a sword too. So it was he had this a is, big dick too. To judge him by how long that fucking loincloth <laughs> is, huh? <laughs> it's like hanging down below his knees. If you don't have a big dick, the lion is not going to listen to you. Look, that eagle's landing on his arm. Yeah. yeah, he he. This was like the Conan the Barbarian days. Like after Conan, the movie uh -huh. was a giant hit. There was a lot of dudes with their shirts off holding swords. Holding swords. It was a, a thing. Telling lions where to go. Yeah. It was a... I'll tell you one thing that I would never do in acting is I will never, ever... I, I can't... I probably shouldn't say this, but like working with monkeys, aside from you know it's going to be a bad movie, <laughs> it's just no fucking way. I worked with a writer who got attacked by a monkey when he was a kid, and, and it was just one of those organ grinder ones, and they <laughs> fucked him up. One of those fucking... Uh, the, 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 the eating monkey disorder monkey, hat. you know? <laughs> After he eats all the bananas, it goes and pukes. <laughs> it's in show business, man. It's got to dance, dance for the organ grinder music. And Are there fat monkeys? And he was talking about like, it, it, like his clarity and understanding of monkeys just by getting attacked by one. He goes, nah, he goes, I won't do it. He goes, you do like you're good for about 18, 20 minutes. And then the monkey just starts fucking acting crazy. And then eventually it just gets like... You know, I've always said that you go to the circle, like a circus, like a bear doesn't want to ride a bicycle. So what did they do to that fucking thing to make it give in? Yeah. And it's a bear. So eventually it's going to become a bear again, you know, and it's something's going like all like the, those circus, all that shit. It's just, it's inevitable. Like what you're doing. Yeah. Circus is a dark. Because they, the, what they do to elephants and monkeys and bears, there's a great video. It's not a good, well, it's horrible. Do you have any happy videos of animals just existing? <sighs> I don't save those. I know you don't. Just them chilling out. There's a video of a chimp riding a bike and a, and a bear riding a bike. And the chimp tripped up the bear somehow. And they crashed. And the bear grabs a hold of the chimp and just rips it apart in front of everybody. <laughs> <laughs> the bear just, with that fucking <laughs> yeah here it is so the bear's riding and the chimp's riding and they collide and when they collide the bear is fucking furious at the chimp and just starts fucking wrecking it has him. like road rage right boom goes down and he tries to help him back get back on the bike is this it is this the yeah. one? Oh yeah. oh he's got the chimp right there yeah. oh yeah it's too late I thought they have a muzzle on the fucking thing. Uh, not this time. They trusted him. So he just fucks up that chimp and they can't get it away from him. And that's not even a big bear. That's a small bear. No, dude, that's fucking huge. Would you want to fight that guy in a bar? No. A guy that stocky, Oop. that hairy coming at you? That <laughs> <laughs> Georgia Animal Steel. It's just such a stupid fucking form of entertainment. You know, let's get animals to do shit that they don't normally do. People are freaking out. Wah! I like it took them that long to stand up to realize that's not part of the show. <laughs> Something about music. It can just take you emotionally where you want them to go. So they're saying, yeah. And there's he ripping them apart. Like, Do you imagine that that used to be show business? You used to be like in a, a covered wagon. You'd pull into town. Ladies and gentlemen, gather around. Uh, and there was a show. And then, you know, you have a, a minstrel show and people would sing and do puppets and Ugh. it'd be a play. And you'd, yeah. I mean, that's, I mean, when, when do you think the first guy got up and told jokes and made people laugh? Like, when was our first? Oh, who's that guy? He wrote that, he wrote that great uh, book on the history of stand-up. And it was a guy like Frank Fay or something like that yeah. who was the first guy that went out there like, I don't need to have, like, a fucking hula hoop and spinning plates. And he just went out and was like, I'm just going to tell stories and make them like... He, he kind of did a monologue type of thing. But... Uh, he was the first guy. If what I have it right. Was the, I think it was the 20s. And then in the 40s, he was actually on the side of the fascists. He was a fascist. Yeah, there was people... Really? Yeah, there was people in this country that, you know... Didn't think what those guys were doing was necessarily wrong, which really, if you look at the history, forget about this country or humanity, like there's always been that. So what fucked his career, if I'm remembering this correctly, this could be like fucking, I hope I'm saying the right guy. He So he ended up doing this. Uh, Here this it is. Yeah. Frank he, Faye stand up. He did this show. 
All right. I guess that's earlier when he's doing the props. He's come out dressed like he's in the Foreign Legion. Um, but he did a show right after World War II, right after he won. And it was a pro-fascist rally in New York City. And he was the big name. He signed on to do it. And the night was called The Friends of Frank Fay. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> the first stand-up comic was a fascist. How strange! I, no, I can't say. I, I don't. I don't know that. But then there's other people that I got a buddy of mine that will argue that that um, Mark Twain was. Yeah, Samuel Clements. Yeah, will argue. Will yeah. argue that he was the first stand-up. So I don't know really. Necessarily. I think it just sort of they were, it sort of poked its head up and then ducked back down like somebody improv the line. Mm. Like, hey, I did that without my hula hoop. You know, <laughs> <laughs> see, and I went good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and they got sick of lugging shit around or something. I don't know what it was, but uh, did you ever see Lenny with Dustin Hoffman? Yeah, he it's was great. great in that. I mean, he really came off like a comic. He yeah. really seemed like he was Lenny Bruce. No, he's an, an incredible, incredible actor. Yeah. You know, I actually went down a rabbit hole looking up a bunch of shit about him, and um, oh no, it wasn't that. I don't even know how I went down this rabbit hole, but there was these fucking talk about like. Before 9-11, like what you could do and then still walk around a free man like 18 months later was crazy. Like these people on the Upper East Side, I don't know what the fuck they were doing. This really radicalized time, like the 60s, early 70s. I don't know what the, somewhere around that time, these people were making a bomb. What? Yeah. And like these rich kids or some shit because it was like a t in a townhouse on the Upper East Side. And Dustin Hoffman had one on that block, close enough to it. And, you know, these fucking idiots blew themselves up, blew the fucking building up, and fucked with his townhouse. And there's a picture of him, if you can find it, is he grabbed some piece of expensive art that he had bought, got it out of his house, and it's a picture of a young Dustin Hoffman walking up the street. Look at that. Yeah. This poor guy, like, had the balls to go after a dream, you know, you think it's hard making it as a comic. I don't even know how the fuck he made it as an actor. Now, forget about then. Yeah, look at it. Blew up their whole fucking thing. <laughs> and he's like, I made it. I'm on the Upper East Side. Oh Everything's great. And then look these- the Fucking, the building's missing. Yes. So oh, my God. So he owns something close enough to that. Yeah. Jesus Christ, it's crazy. It's like all the building to the building to the left's fine, building to the right's fine, and that building's obliterated. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure that there was some damage done oh, to those sure. other ones. So, But it's crazy how the one in the middle is just missing. No, but if you look it up, like the, 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 the jail time that they got, for, well, I mean, you know, obviously the person who was down there, the people down there died, I think. But then there was they figured out who was in cahoots with them. But also their parents owned a townhouse on the Upper East Side. Oh, so they probably- Listen, Jimmy's been a little, you know, distant, your honor. You know, you know they go to the same fucking party. Yeah, you can get away with shit before the internet. They passed around some cash. Do you ever see a documentary? Yeah, that chick who shot fucking uh, Andy Warhol. Barely did any fucking time. And then years really? later, how he died. I always thought he, I don't, he drugged himself for uh, just doing drugs or partying. But it, I think it was complications from- The bullet wound. Yeah, when you when you get like shot. Like I also think- you got, oh, like, yeah. yeah Organ you, damage. Well, when you get shot in the gut too, that's like the Ugh. fucking worst because all that shit that breaks down your food seeps in like the infections and the, the, the shit that happens. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's, it's horrific. What did she horrific. shoot him for? I I don't know. I don't know. I'm not saying he I'm not saying anybody was a great fucking person here, but that that's never a solution. But the jail time that that person got was ridiculously short. And then he's got to live the rest of his life dealing with the fallout of what that person did to him and then also knowing that that crazy chick is out there. Well, isn't the guy who shot Reagan out now? No. I think they were going to let him out, and he was like, no, guys, no, you don't want to do that. <laughs> I, <laughs> he think, said, I think he said that. I thought they let him out. My memory isn't the greatest. I'm probably getting, I'm probably <laughs> combining all three of these stories, and it's actually yeah. about- He's out? Well, I mean, just a quick week, he says he's released, so- What's see. his name again? John, John Hinckley. Hinckley, yeah. yeah. You should look up everything I say. Actually, Bill, it's completely the other direction. Do you, rem do you ever watch a documentary on the Weathermen? Do you remember the Weathermen? No. The, the Weathermen were a radical uh, terrorist group. From the 60s. I thought it was like some Ron Burgundy shit. Okay. 60s or the 70s? That's what that Greenwich bombing has something to do with that. There's like a group called like the SDS, the Students of Democratic Society, which was uh. an offshoot of the Weathermen. I'm l just looking through the Wikipedia. Of this Were story. they radicalized rich white kids? Maybe. Well, one of, the, <laughs> one of the guys who was one of the Weathermen went on to become a professor at a university 
in oh. Chicago. And that was one of the things that they were talking about when Obama was running for president. He's friends with a terrorist because he knew this guy from his from his university days. All right. Because wasn't that like the idea in Fight Club that the Project Mayhem, something like that? You know what I'm talking that? about? That's the same same sort of idea where they just wanted to fuck up all sorts of different things in society and not troll people, but like bomb shit. You know mm, what I'm talking about? Yes. We should ask Chuck okay. when he was in here. Um, hmm. But the weathermen, anyway, the documentary is crazy. They were they wanted to take down society and they wanted to take down the government. So they were doing acid and having orgies and, 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 and showing then, up to places and blowing things up. And there was no like, so then we can rebuild it. It was just like, let's just know. fuck it up. I mean, I think there's a lot of anarchists, a lot of people in the their youth where they want to just tear the whole fucking thing down. You know, I was having a conversation with my, my wife about this. Really interesting. Just the other day, we were out at dinner, and she was like, when she was young, she had a rough childhood, and uh, she was hoping that society would fall apart, because her life was a mess, and other people's lives were great. And she had this thing in her head, like, she, she hoped society crumbled, right. because then everything would be fucked all over the world. No one would be okay, because her life wasn't okay. And I'm like, that's really normal. interesting. Yeah, really interesting, because her, her insight, the way she was talking about it, it was like, because she was remembering that very specifically when she was young, you know, chaotic. And, you That's know. why that Tarantino movie so, so like funny to me. I loved it. I don't think they ever say hippie without saying fucking. <laughs> Everybody goes fucking hippies. <laughs> well, there's always been people like that, right? There's always been people who want to take the whole fucking thing down. You know, there's I want to know when people. you can buy that movie and own it. Like what else? Because back in the day, you just buy like the DVD. Because that is like, uh, like you're going on tour. That's like that's going to be a good fellas movie for me, where I'm going to watch that thing a hundred uh, five thousand times in yeah. my life and always see something new in it. And then it becomes like like the second time I saw it. I realized how great the actor playing. Uh, I'm trying to talk all this surface. Yeah, uh, don't give any spoiler alerts. Well, this this guy he plays a director that's going to direct Leonardo DiCaprio, and like what that guy does with that role, and how many inside jokes. You don't have to be in show business. How fucking funny that guy is. Um, it's like you know the 90th time I watched Goodfellas, I realized how funny that guy was. Uh, the guy who had the wigs. Like oh, his yeah, character. Morty. <laughs> yeah, how fucking hilarious. <laughs> and how great that guy played that degenerate gambler. Because um, the first time you watch it, it's like Joe Pesci and De Niro. You've seen all of those guys. And then you start to like Frankie Carbone and, you yeah. know, and uh, uh, the roast beef guy and all of that shit. But then you just watch it and it's just it's like everybody is great in this. Yeah. Everybody took There's like layers. one or two lines. And everybody just like hit a home run. You know what freaked me out in that movie that I couldn't believe? The violence against women. Like the scenes, the fight scenes. I don't want to give anything away. But oh, yeah, there yeah. was some where you're like, whoa, you could still do this in a movie? Yeah. Like, holy shit. That's my favorite quote from Tarantino. What? I saw an interview one time and they were saying like, yeah, we know I was trying to write movies and stuff, you know, and they were going like, you can't do this, you can't do that. He's like, wait a minute, he goes, I can do whatever the fuck I want. It's like that. Well, that's why your movies are great. Yeah. Whether He's you like the them or not, you just like that's that's the comic I want to yes. watch. I can say whatever the fuck I want. Yeah. Good. I want to see you totally unfiltered. Yeah. That's good. I mean, there's a time and a place, I think, you know, um, you know, to to be filtered. Sure. You know what I mean? There's no sense just going in and showing your ass and being a you know, if right. if somebody hires you for a private gig and they go, okay. Perform between these two lines. You're not Lenny Bruce if you go in there and you go outside and you're a fucking asshole. Right. Because you agreed to do that. Right. You do a corporate gig yes. for a Christian church. Right. But if you're at like a, a comedy club, it's like, no, you, you're you a guest. Yeah. You you came into a nightclub. So right. you, this isn't, you know, if you don't like it, you leave. But well, this not, fucking- I came to see you specifically. Yeah. And all the other people did too. And the one or two people that'll get upset, well, you're the problem. The other people are there to see this kind of shit. It's, it's incredibly so rare to see. selfish. It'd be like if I went to a restaurant and I didn't like the meal, and then the chef owed me an apology and had to change his menu. And you didn't want anybody else to eat. Stop yeah. eating. I hate this food. And if you go in there and eat off of that menu, then you're part of the fucking problem. <laughs> and I'm going to try to take you down too. Yeah. Because you didn't have a problem with this fucking chicken and dumplings, whatever the, f <laughs> whatever the fuck yeah. he's making. Yeah. Strange time. Strange. Best name special, I feel. Yeah. Well, I didn't know what else to call it. It's just that's all I could think of. Yeah. I like it because it's not, uh, 
It's not, you're not punching them in the, you're not, you just say, it's strange. It's a weird time. Yeah. Paper tiger. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> How long do you think you're going to wait until you do another one? Do you have an idea in your head? Are you going to try to do two years? What are you trying to do? No, do you have a set schedule? I never think that. No, because that takes the enjoyment out of it. It's like more like, I had a bit that I was doing uh, the first time I told this story in my new hour two women like yelled out simultaneously and they yelled the same thing, which means they whispered to each other, let's yell this in three, two, one. And I got, I'll go fuck yourself. I got into that with them. And then they went upstairs and I'm like, it's a comedy club. I know they're still there because <laughs> comedy club security is the worst. <laughs> it's the worst. They just, they just, they, they don't know how to kick people out. So, I went upstairs, I had put the hoodie up and all of that shit. They said they were at the bar. I walked by and then I go outside the club, took the hoodie up and then they were there and then we got into it again. And I was just like, you don't even know me. Go fuck yourselves. You don't know what the fuck I'm saying. Fuck you fucking- What were they mad at? Uh, just my perception on something. I was telling a fucking story, right? So, um, and it had to do uh, with a lesbian. So that, and then it was the wrong show to do it on because I think it was kind of a gay show. I mean, I went up there, they had paper cutouts of dicks all over the place. So I'm like, all right. <laughs> but it's a comedy club. So I'm, tell, I'm telling the story I want to tell. So I told the story and, you know, <laughs> so it took me a little while, you know, to kind of, I, I, pretty much I mean, it was like, you know, I don't want to have that kind of interaction with people. So I've just been, you know, working the bit out, working the bit out. And then like, you know, I did the joke the other night at the Laugh Factory, and the exact person from that group came up to me, told me she loved the joke, and she was just like, I feel like you were describing my life. And I'm like, that's why, that's the fun of this shit. And, um, you know, as people say, like, when you're working out a joke, I can't do it at home. Yeah. I have to go out there and just start throwing shit against the wall and see how to piece this stuff together. So... To go back to like, when are you going to do a special again? Like, I enjoy this part too much to um, rush it. We had to be thinking about like, you know, then you're like, okay, I'm doing a special. I'm taping it here and then I'm in the bubble. And then every night I go on stage and it's just like, okay, no, 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 I got to do this. And maybe, maybe what if I open with this? And what if I put the, and, I, and just, it just becomes, um, you know, there's this added weight to it mm. that makes it like, you know, the opposite reason, the entire reason why I got into this business was not to have a fucking real job. I wanted to have fun. So this, which is, goes back to what I was talking about you when I was watching. I was like, ah, fuck, Joe's on the other side. He shot his special and now he's going down. And as much as it can be frustrating putting it together, he's having fun every night. Um, seeing, all right, where's this idea going to go? Yeah. Is this going to lead? Because this, like when I'm putting together a new hour, like I have some of the hackiest shit ever. And I take all of those rules and throw them out the window. I don't give a fuck if you see me doing these jokes. And um, most of them don't live, but some of them grow into something that's- Better. Yeah, and then it's not hacky. And yeah. now it's this this thing that then shoots off into this, and then you just start spinning off over here. Yeah, yeah. And then all of a sudden, hey, I got like, I got like eight minutes. I got 12 minutes. They're seeds, right? It's, yeah, it's starting to come together. So- when people go down there and it's literally like it's not even done. You're just starting to draw and they're reacting to it saying it sucks. And it's like, it's it's not done. I'm just- Yeah, I agree with you. It sucks. Yeah. 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 I'm with you. Yeah. This is how I work out. But some people know that. Some people understand that. Some people think they're coming to see a finished Most product. Most people. Most people now. Today, in 2019. Yeah, crowds are great. Yes. Comics. It's just one person in 50 shows complains. And it's, you know, because there's so much shit to look at. Like, controversy gets people to stop at your website. And then you get yeah. credit from the advertisers in the side. And then they, they gas up shit. And they, yep. and they, they you know, well, I saw a guy recently talking. because you know, it's weird. Everyone on the internet hates me, but I walk down the street and everybody loves me. <laughs> so it's just like... <laughs> So what is what's really going on there? Is what's going on is is the small that percentage that don't like you is being shown to be the majority. You know? Well, it's a very vocal minority who get upset about things and they're very they're adamant about it and they're very active. That's what it is. The people that are upset, 
about certain things, people that are and they're really responding Specific to outrage things. culture. They're yes. very if long if you know because then you you can do yeah. exactly nine times out of ten exactly what they're complaining is being done to them. They turn around and then do trying to find their justice. And they just, I don't know, the irony seems to be lost on these people. But, like, I don't talk about, I try not to talk about that shit a lot because I don't want to give it any more yeah. added weight than it deserves. And it's just like, well, it's know, recent. If, if people bring it up, I just say, well, you know, not everybody's going to like me. Yeah. I, I, I don't know what to tell you. I don't need everybody, I just need enough people to fill up enough of, of wherever I'm playing so I can continue doing this. That, well, that's all I need. not only that, like as a comedy fan, like what you're doing right now, like the, the, what you're doing in, your, in the special, the stuff that I saw you working out before the special is what I always wanted to see. As a comedy fan, that's what oh. I like. I like. I like people who take risks, who say crazy shit that, you know, you know is you're walking out on a line, right. you know, you're on a wire. You know, I, I want to see you walk, like the, that troops bit. You're walking a fucking wire, and you could feel it. You could feel buttholes clenching up oh, while yeah. you start the bit. I love it. That kind of comedy to me is the most fun, especially now at this day and age with uh, all my years in comedy. Right. If something still makes me go, oh, shit, where's he going? Yeah. <laughs> and no, then you and pull I, it and, off. But the thing is, is if you're going to keep being a comedian, then you know how to do it. Yeah. So then you're just going to be bored if you just wrote shit that you knew the crowd was going to like and blah, right. blah, blah. But to then challenge yourself to kind of, hey, can I, yeah, can I say what I think about this in a funny way that doesn't put people? Because I don't, I am not that guy. I don't want to walk the crowd. Right. I don't want to have people waiting to yell at me. Right. There's certain people that like that and kind of want to be that person. That's not what I'm trying to do. Yeah. I just want to make you laugh. And uh, I definitely, you know, will steer into air. I have a lot of silly shit too, but I'll steer into some areas or whatever. But um, it's all like just done in fun. It's just yeah. done in fun. It's just silly. You just listen to some idiot at a bar. That's all you're doing. Exactly. And if you're not there to see that, well, then you picked the wrong place. Yeah, it's not legislation. Now you know. Go home. Yeah. I just saw a great quote. Joan Rivers said that. One What'd of my she favorites say? of all time. What did she say? I'm saying a comedian should never apologize for a joke. It just means you didn't get the joke and- uh, that bitch I, I, was ruthless. It, oh, dude. She was ruthless. To the day she died, she was ruthless. <laughs> no, I saw her. I saw her towards the end of her life, and I was just yeah. going like, I couldn't pull that off. I couldn't pull that off. But like, she was also somebody that like was like Carlin, um, where it was they didn't just go, okay, I got here and we're satisfied. They just kept mm -hmm. going to higher and higher levels and- um, that and I'm telling you, if you watch her on the Ed Sullivan show, okay, in the 60s, where yeah. her act was at versus the 70s and then the 80s and the 90s, there's very few artists that you watch that their trajectory is this. Continuing uh, to climb. Jack Lemmon, one of my favorite actors of all time. You watch him in the apartment, as great as he is in that, Jack Lemmon and Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross blows away Jack Lemmon in 1960, 61 yeah. because- you know, not like I knew the guy, but like if you don't take the ride, is what I call it. You know, when people say, "Yeah, yeah," and you yeah. just, "Yeah, I'm fucking yeah." That, that's when you you just level off and you start to go back down. If you keep going, like I, I can learn from younger people, I yeah. can learn from older people, peers. You'll continue if you, but but it's it's constant, like work. Yes. If you put the work in, like I'm hoping, because both of them fascinate me. Equally, Carlin and and Joan Rivers, how they 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 went they went like this, you know, and and i Carlin was so fucking out there. I thought there was comedians that didn't get what he was doing towards the end. And now you go back and watch what the fuck he was saying in the two thousands, and all of that shit is happening. I mean, yes. he was just he was ahead of the curve. Yeah, people thought he was overreacting. Or no, he's just this angry old man, and it's just like no, he you, saw you, where yeah, it was going. You need to go back. And listen, he's trying to warn you about some shit, and he was just a hundred percent. I mean, just fucking on on the money. Like I can watch shit that he said in nineteen ninety and be like, yeah, yeah. I, that that actually, I know what that is right now. Like that's it's it that's not like 
You, you, I mean, that, that's almost like 30 years ago, and you, you don't watch it like he's up there like, hey, take my wife, please. Right. You know, it, it's not like this. It's like a timeless thing. Well, some people, I think the struggle of doing the work, of showing up at the clubs, of grinding, that feeling of you know going on stage with the seeds of new material and eating shit, not knowing where they're going and taking chances, going on a limb and failing and then succeeding and then finding punchlines and new new ways to take the bit. And then right. all you, one night you ad lib something and holy fuck, that's it. This is the whole thing. Portal. And then you piece it all together. Yeah, you find a wormhole into another dimension and you, you piece it all together. People get weary. They get tired of doing that. And I they think look it's for just, a retirement. But I also think I think it's a the fear of those stories we were talking about earlier is like the humiliation of trying to learn how to actually be a comedian yes. or being in a band. Anything that involves getting up on a stage, you don't want to go you don't want to feel that again. Right. So I think people will like, okay, I'm doing this and this works. And then there's a fear, well, I'm finally drawing tickets. Because everybody, I don't give a fuck who made it like most of us had that feeling in a comedy condo of like, am I the guy who's not going to fucking make it? Yeah. What if I don't? And that fucking cold sweat feeling, I I think people who uh, stop growing, it, I think part of it is that. You don't yeah. want to go back to, uh, what the fuck did I say? I said something the other night on stage and it bombed so fucking bad. <laughs> It was like a vacuum. I can't believe I didn't get sucked into my own body. Like, it was like a kick to the chest. It was like I had, I had to pull out an old joke to get it so I could get a drink of water. Like, whew. <laughs> I had not taken up the midsection. I was just sitting there like, huh? You got it like, right in the liver. Boom, yeah. Yeah, liver shot. <laughs> it wasn't a liver shot because I would have gone down. and Solar plexus. <gasps> it was, uh, yeah, it was definitely, yeah. I had to regroup. And get back on the, uh, yeah, I'd stepped into like a sinkhole it's on that one. It's fun that that could still happen, though. I like that that can still happen. I like things that scare the shit out of me. I always have. I'm, I'm into yeah. them. I'm not into safe things. I, I like it when it goes off the road and into the trees. I, I In certain parts. I, in comedy, yeah. I do. I don't yeah. like that in- uh, Life. Yeah, in my no. personal relationships. I no, don't no, like no, when no, it gets no. scary. I enough. don't like that either. Yeah, that's uh, that, could, that could be a problem. Yeah. yeah, I think that we all can learn- like if we keep doing it, I think one of the, Dom Herrera told me this too. He goes, Joe, one of the things that I really love about comedy, he goes, uh, I think I'm better than I've ever been. And he goes, I've been doing this comedy for fucking 40 years. I agree goes, with that. I, I agree with it as well. But it's because of his love of it, you know, Dom loves it. Like he'll go on stage in the OR and they're, they're bringing him up, you know, ladies and gentlemen, you've seen this guy on HBO and this and that and that and this, all his fucking credits. Yep. And he's walking onto that stage with a big smile on his face. This is the best part of his day. Yep. He's going to go up there and fucking murder. Does anybody give a better shitting on your inter, uh, intro than him? <laughs> no, he's One the of best. my favorite things at the store is like Dom's bringing up like, oh, I can't wait to hear what he says about me. Yeah. And it's always like this, uh, he does this complimentary while he's taking your fucking yes, knees out. exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, he's a fantastic on Kill Tony. He's one of the best guests ever on Kill Tony. Because, you know, oh, okay. yeah, because those comics go up and they do one minute, and so many of them are brand new. They might have done stand up once or never before. And it's their first I can't time. believe those kids have the balls to do that. It's I, amazing. I, I wouldn't. It's a great uh, show. It's a great right. show because of that. And Tony's such a great host, and him and Red Band fucking with the people. But the, my favorite by far side guest is when Dom is a guest. Oh, because, I'll have to check that cause out. Because he's fu so fucking good at it. He's so good at shitting on bad comedy. <laughs> 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 and half compliment you and half shitting at yeah. you at the same time. I used to love his show that he used to do at the Laugh Factory, Busting Balls with Dime Herrera. Yeah. He would do- I did that. Yeah, and they would sit down with you. I did like an hour you. on Jamie Masada. <laughs> <laughs> buddy, buddy, Bill buddy! I Bill. never said that, man. Oh, uh, yeah, never, never said that. Bill you did Bill. say that. You did say that. You did ban me from the club. Listen, you did buddy, all of this shit. I don't know who put your stuff on YouTube. Was not me, buddy. It's not me, buddy. Yeah. yeah. He Don never owns up to the fact he banned me from the club one time. That never happened, man. Why did he ban you? Um, he was doing this thing where he wanted people to work clean or something, and I went up there and admittedly. I, you know, just some nights you get on stage, you start saying fuck and you can't stop. It was one of those sets. And he goes, buddy, what happened, man? You know, you go up on stage, you fuck, fuck, fuck all over the place, man. <laughs> and I just laughed. I thought he was fucking around. And then I, I, all of a sudden I wasn't getting spots. 
And then somebody gave him the advice, call him up and apologize. Ugh. And then he knew he had me. Ugh. And I apologized, and then he just fucked with me. What, how, how long ago was this? Uh, late 90s. <laughs> 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 fun times fun times no they were not fun times and the store was not fun you would go down the store there was like nobody there and it was just these fucking famous comics would just drop in and they would do like hours and oh, yeah, hours and they, would, and they didn't do the work they hadn't written anything and they right. were just standing in the mic saying yeah so what else is going on and they were teaching all these young comics that like someday when I get on a show I'm gonna fucking do that I'm gonna yes. come in there and I remember being like, this is what it is? What the fuck is this? And then, uh, it's all late 90s. Then I went down to the improv and Seinfeld, as right as Seinfeld had wrapped up and it was the first time I was seeing him live and it was like Jerry's popping in. And I was just like, oh, wow, man. Okay, I want to see Jerry. And he had a 20-minute spot and he did 20 minutes. Yeah. He came up, he opened with something that worked, he closed with something that worked and he worked on his new shit in the middle. 20 minutes, got the light, wrapped up, thank you, good night. I remember thinking, like, that guy's a fucking pro. A pro. Yeah. There was a time where that was a thing to do, where guys, uh, you know, and I think Chris Rock would do it, where he, that's how he would come up with material. And he would per he would say to the audience, don't get too excited, this shit ain't gonna be that funny. Right. He would say that. Like, and he would go on after somebody that killed. Like, someone would do, like, 15 minutes right. of all their best shit, and then Chris would pop in. So Chris would go up afterward, and he'd go... What else? What else? And he would like, I think it was a strategy to put himself in these bad positions, hoping right. that he would find a way out of it. And then he would take those little chunks that he would find when he would find a way out of right. it and then build those into bits. But he he wasn't one of those guys that went up and just did two hours no, to no, do no, two no, hours because no. he was Chris Rock. No, he did like 20 minutes or something. He, yeah, yeah, he was always like, whenever I saw him pop in, I would always watch because he was working. He, he had written stuff yeah. and he was working on it. And it was. Uh, I know who you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. I know who you're talking about exactly. Yeah. That would yeah. do. There's a couple of guys that would do that. Yeah. Oh, it was the worst. It was bad because they weren't even trying to be. They weren't trying to entertain the crowd. And they by were, the time they were, they going were up done, there being famous. Yes. And by the time they were done, the fucking show was done. People would just get up in droves because it wasn't entertaining. Yeah. 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 Well, those days are done. You know, that's a beautiful thing. <laughs> There's no more of that. A couple of people have tried to do that, you know. A couple of people have come in, like, fairly recently that are famous and run the light and have done 45 minutes to try to do that, and they, they can't come back. They've had a few of those people try to stop in. Uh, I never I never thought that that would – I always thought that fame would win that one. That's 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 good to hear. that, the, And they're actually doing the person a favor. Well, you know why they can't do that anymore? The, the shows are sold out every fucking night at the store, and it's packed. <laughs> with killer comedians you yeah. can't do that anymore you can't go on in between you and delia and joey diaz and just what else what else you can't do that anymore <laughs> those days are done yeah you got to bring it after joey those days are done yeah jesus yeah. christ joey diaz will leave a fucking hole in that room he leaves yeah. a hole and you got to fill that fucking hole in before he can even start to tell yeah. jokes yeah i love joey he's a monster i've never seen anybody kill harder in my life I've been doing comedy 31 years. I've never seen anybody kill harder yeah, than Joey he, Diaz. Yeah, he has a command. He's a monster. Yeah, when he goes out there, it's like, all right, the captain's here. Yeah, he's a monster. <laughs> he hits some high... And also, by the way, he's doing comedy from 1990. He's doing comedy like Me Too never happened, the internet never happened, there's no fucking rules. Yeah. He does, he does not give a fuck and just really doesn't. Really it still doesn't. kills because Murders. most people... Yeah. Don't give a fuck. Well, not, in a bad, not in a toxic right. fucking way right. that they say. It's just like they know they're seeing jokes. Yeah. They know that yeah. he's fucking around. Right. He's funny. Yeah. And it's good. That's yeah. the other thing, too. It, it's ridiculous, outrageous, but it's also really well-worded, well well-timed well -timed shit. Right. Yeah. This is how much good comedy You know, somebody right was now. telling me there's a thing out there now that if somebody shows up who's hard of hearing, you're supposed to have a device for that to help them out and if they don't they can sue you so there's a there's some fucking ambulance chaser hard of hearing <laughs> guy <laughs> going around suing people well i've done shows where they had a sign language horse and you've done that right well they have to do it like yeah. at certain theaters like but uh, my thing is it why is it on the club it's like you know you're hard of hearing yeah <laughs> <laughs> 
How the fuck? Like, I gotta... Yeah, hire somebody. Yeah, if you have a limp, do I have to make sure there's a cane there? I did cobs once, and there was a guy in the audience that was deaf, and he actually hired someone to do sign language. So someone was sitting facing him Mm -hmm. while I was, like, he was facing me. And someone was sitting, like, say, if uh, if Jamie is the audience member, uh-huh. and you're you're you know, like this TV's where the stand-up is. This lady was doing this, and then doing this to him, doing this, and doing this to him. And the guy was like, like getting along. And so I was going, "What's going on here?" And, I, and then I had to sort it out. Right. Like, and, oh, you hired her to do. That. He goes, "Yeah, I bring her to." Well, you know, he explained, "I right. bring her to to comedy clubs." I go, "Do you bring her to movies?" Like he's like, he's like <laughs> this guy had this lady that he would hire, and she would do sign language for him. But good for him though; he didn't make a big deal out of it. He just he hired somebody. That's actually great. So he can go to movies and nobody talking bugs him. <laughs> People eating their popcorn too loud. He can't hear he any of it. He's just getting. He doesn't. He only needs to see a movie once. He gets all yeah. the fucking dialogue. He doesn't get the music, the manipulation that the music gives you. That shit doesn't work on him. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, this music drives me nuts in movies. I mean, I like it. It adds to movies. Right. But there's sometimes when I'm aware of it, that's when it bothers me, when I'm aware. When there's like piano playing oh, yeah, and the guy yeah, and the girl yeah, are holding yeah. hands, I'm like, come on. Right. You didn't need to do this to me. Or if they pick a hacky song oh, that you've seen in yeah. like 40 different movies, it's like, all yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. That was cool when Scorsese used it in 1980. But it's, a, it's an interesting thing because it came from the time where there was no sound in movies. So they would add a musical soundtrack. Because right. the movies were silent. And you would see the screen where the words would come out. So we, from then, associated movies with music. Right. It's a weird thing. Like, these people are talking. There's a shootout. There's a fucking fight in a, in a scene, in a, in a movie, in a, uh, in a comedy club or whatever, in the movie. And mm-hmm. then there's music playing and all this stuff's right. going on. Like, why is there music playing? Why you manipulate? Because they've always had music in movies. Right. So from the time they had movies where they were silent, there was music playing in the background, they just kept it in there. Like, it doesn't make sense that music is in movies. You're showing me scenes of things that are supposedly really happening, and I'm supposed to be locked in like they're right. really happening, but there's this unexplained fucking music that corresponds no, I, with I, all I, the action on the but screen. But there's, there's an art to everything. Oh, for real, for so sure. So if used properly, yes. it's No, for fucking sure there's incredible. an art, but it's amazing that we automatically associate those two things together. Right. Because music is a totally different thing than a movie, but yet they're inexorable yeah. to us. Mo- I wouldn't want to watch Jaws without that fucking thing. Do-do-do-do. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Do-do-do-do. Oh, fuck, but it's, it's back. I wonder, That's all I would think when I'd hear that. Oh, no, it's back. <laughs> I wonder if when they first invented movies, if they already had invented audio recording. Because it's kind of crazy that they invented video recording before audio. You would think that it'd be easier. No, there used to be a. Then they would have some person would be playing the piano live. Sure, 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 sure. The, they did at, that too. At the uh, yeah. event. That's what I thought. I don't know. I think L- they did that too. My time. I think I they remember. did that too. But they definitely, if you watch an old silent movie, there's music playing. You so, know, I watched a thing on. Uh, I like those Turner Classic movies. And um, I was watching this thing. They did a whole thing on Buster Keaton. Ah. It was fucking unbelievable. It was, I was, I recorded, I've watched it like three times. Do you know that guy broke his neck doing a fucking stunt? He wasn't even aware that he did it. He was definitely in pain. He was doing some gig, that, uh, some bit, there was like a train coming down. And you know the water spout thing that you pulled down? Yeah. The joke was that it came down on him, but they didn't understand. They didn't, you know, the physics of it, how hard <laughs> that water was coming out. And it slammed him down onto the train tracks. You don't, there's so much water, you don't see how he hits. But he broke his fucking neck and didn't realize it. Then years later, he went to the doctor with some headaches or something. like. I don't know what the hell it was. Uh... But the guy was going, uh, he's just looking at the x-ray. He's like, so uh, when'd you break your neck? He goes, I never broke my neck. He goes, yeah, you did. <laughs> and poor point this shit out. <sighs> yeah. I dislocated my shoulder apparently at one point in time and I didn't know I did it. I got an MRI. The doctor's like, you dislocated your shoulder. And yeah, I'm like, dude, when? you're a fucking lunatic. I would have been flopping like a fish out of water <laughs> if I did it. Uh, you know who else broke his neck in a movie? Stallone. When he was like 65. When he's oh, doing no. the expendables, someone threw him into a wall and he snapped his neck. To this day, he's got bolts and rods in his neck. It's all fused together. Whoa. Yeah, you see an x-ray of his neck? It's fucking nuts. Pull up an x-ray of Sylvester Stallone's neck. Talk about a guy still fucking giving people their money's worth. Yes. 65, he won't even do the stunt double? This show is like the Sylvester Stallone fan club show because everybody, like, like whenever his name comes up, 
Like the other day, Eddie Bravo was talking about all the fucking movies this guy, the guy's relevant from Rocky One in the 1970s, uh -huh. and now he's doing like Rambo 14 or whatever the fuck it is. He's Last 85 blood. years old. September 20th. Yeah, I think. he's a geriatric old man holding a knife. Uh, coming to get you. He's still at it. Yeah. Still at it. Billboards everywhere. Rambo. People are psyched. Probably going to be the number one movie in the country. I love a stuntman. Didn't use a stuntman and broke his fucking neck and then continue filming. That's for all your filming. youngsters out there. Anytime they go, you want the stuntman to do it, always say yes. Look at this. Tom Look Cruise duct taping his himself to the side of a plane. This guy's a crazy. Look at his neck. So he's got a cage. Scroll up. Scroll. Oh my God. Yeah. So his neck is fused. All those vertebrae and screws and bolts. That and those is, never it, come out. Never. That is his neck for life. Not only that, it compromises the upper and lower discs. So the, when your neck is fused like that, that's an unnatural sort of condition for those joints. So the upper and lower ones, there's, there's additional stress, and it's a, an unnatural leverage point. Yeah, fuck that. You're fucking dude, he did that's it when he was like 65. Yeah. He's got screws and bolts in his neck and shit. They threw, he got thrown into a wall. And crack. <laughs> what does it say? Stone Cold Steve Austin was so fucking vicious, I end up getting a hairline fracture in my neck. I'm not joking. I haven't told anyone this. I had to have a very serious operation afterwards. Now I have a metal plate in my neck. Yeah. Yeah, Stone Cold Steve Austin, who's, you know. Who's also, he broke his neck. Oh, he broke everything. All those guys have everything No, the broken. guy was putting him in the pile driver. Oh, really? And he was supposed to, but you know. Supposed so to leave distance. You're right. supposed to have like the guy's head's poking through. When he jumps up, you kind of ease up with your legs. So at the last second, you tuck your chin. I guess. Right. It was how I watched him explain this shit. And what the guy the guy was like freaking out that he was fighting him or something like that, or he fucked up. Oh look, you can see it right there. Oh yeah, see that? And he just he he didn't do it properly. Ooh. He dropped him right on his fucking neck. I mean, Ooh, it says almost broke his neck, but it probably fucked up his discs. The craziest well, one Well, what ever was crazy saw. was he was supposed to win that match, and then he was just fucking laying there, so they didn't know what to do, so then they just took his arm and just put it on the guy's chest, and they were like, one, two, three, over. Oh, my God. Yeah. The craziest one I ever saw was Brock Lesnar. He did a flip through the air and landed on his head. Flipped through the air. He's 300 pounds. Flips through the that air. A, I think he called it a man. shooting star press or something like that. He would flip through the air to land on somebody, but he miscalculated or he slipped or whatever when he did the jump off the top rope. Oh, God. 300 pound gigantic man lands oh. on his face. Didn't even knock him out. Just continue like, ah, and just fucking pin the guy afterwards. Watch this because this is fucking. Oh, God. This shit freaks me out. Absolutely preposterous. The match. This, scroll to the end where he flies through the air. Don't, isn't there like just a highlight of the uh, it's actual? Not as available as we used, used to, to joke be. that that guy was so big, like that's the, the sword tattoo is like actual size. <laughs> I don't know what happened to it. Yeah, it's right, right uh, before that, right before that, because that's that's where he's KO'd. Yeah, right before that. So scroll a little bit before that, a little bit before that. Just right there, click there. Okay, so it must be right before. So it seems like they're showing highlights yeah, here. I thought I could find. Yeah. It. Okay. They don't have it on YouTube? I think it's because he's, he's good at the animals getting eaten alive. <laughs> yeah, this is, here he is. Here he is. This is him. Oh, no. Watch this. Look at the size of that motherfucker. He looks like a cartoon. Look. Boom. He missed. Oh. Landed head first. Look at him holding his head. Most humans are dead right there. Just dead. Oh. So Kurt Angle's trying to pin him? Nope. Shugs him off. The, the idea that you're even alive when you land oh, on your head like dude. that. He just totally miscalculated. He's so lucky he's not paralyzed. Oh, Holy yeah. Shit. Well, he doesn't have a neck. He just has shoulders that go to the top of his head. And he stays with the storyline. Yeah, he popped out of <laughs> wow, it. Wow, that's I mean, a fucking pro. Well, that's why he gets the big bucks. That's why he gets the big bucks. Oh, yeah. He was thinking about coming back to the UFC up until just a few months ago. He's going to fight Daniel Cormier. They were holding the heavyweight title because they were going to match, match him and Daniel Cormier. But then he just decided... You know, he he was doing some legitimate wrestling with some real national champions right. uh, at Michigan State, and he, you know, I think he got to a point in his life is like, especially without steroids, because the UFC has very strict anti-doping policies. And the last time he fought, he tested positive, and so he was like, "Look, I can't, I just can't do this. I can't, I'm not going to do this." And plus, when he was on WWE, there's not a chance in the world he was pissing clean. I mean, so for the years after the UFC. When he was on WWE, he was taking whatever the fuck he wanted to, and he was giant, built like a fucking brick shit house. Jesus. And then they're like, 
and he's like, I want to fight one more time. And then if he's going to fight one more time, he's got to be clean. So he's got to enter into the USADA testing pool. So he's got to be in that testing pool for a period of several months before they'll allow him to compete. So they're testing him this whole time. <laughs> Such a dumb fuck. I was picturing him getting into a pool. Oh. <laughs> and I'm like, what do they do? <laughs> what you sweat, they figure out. <laughs> Get in the pool. We need to clean you <laughs> to find out if you're on steroids. But he came, he was that close. I mean, he's like I late. am so glad you continued to talk to that point or I would have been, I would have been walking around. <laughs> they got a pool. And they get in the pool and uh <laughs> They make you do some laps, and then they <laughs> test the water if there's steroids in it. <laughs> Why the pool? I don't, I just think it's more accurate. <laughs> you know, you just keep answering, and you don't have an answer. You just give one. Oh, boy. All right. He's a fucking giant human being. Yes, he is. That's Viking DNA right there, kids. Yeah. Yes, it is. All right. Let's wrap this bitch up, huh? Yeah. Let's get in a sauna. Relax. Let's do it. Let's, gonna t- Let's do it. Sweat out take the a cigar. nice sauna. Uh, ladies and gentlemen. How did you like this cigar, by the way? I liked did it, you it very much. Well, I didn't have that one. I had this one right here, which was a oh. different one. What is this one? This is my favorite right here. I wish I could read this, but my old man eyes are not La Aurora me. Sapphire. Great afternoon I stick. I got one right here. Great afternoon stick. I'll have it later. Nice and mild, yet flavorful. Tonight, Netflix, midnight. Uh, midnight all across the country, Eastern time, everywhere. Yes, sir. Yes, so, sir. midnight tonight. I don't uh, know how it works in other countries, but I would think the way Netflix does their business, they're good at it. They're so on I, top of it. Yeah. They're the shit. Um, yeah. But uh, I'm excited for you, brother. I'm very excited to see it, too. Oh, thank you very much. And once again, thank you to Mike Binder for uh, the way that it looks. It's, Shout out to Mike Binder. Oh, yeah. You got to um, see it. And uh, if you come to the Improv and the Comedy Store Thursday night, Bill will be working with me. We're going to have some fun. And that's it. Bye, you fucks. See ya. See ya.